Meeting spaces are just a couple of the amenities offered. The Minot International Airport. See the world from home. Hi, Taros fans. I'm Lincoln Earn. When the Taros are on the road, we always stop at Applebee's. They always take care of the Taros, giving us the fuel we need to win away from the Mesa. The boys love to eat there after home games, too. Thanks to Applebee's, when we're on the road, the only thing we're hungry for is a win. Applebee's 2 for 20. Now that's eating good in the neighborhood. Daniel the deer danced everywhere. He pranced through fields and jigged through rivers. Then he saw it. What a stage. A place no deer had dared dance before. The hood of a brand new car. Hey, my car. And the car was covered thanks to Farmers Insurance. Deer Dance Floor, December 1st, 2014. Talk to a farmer's agent. We know a thing or two because we've seen a thing or two. We are farmers. Bum, 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 bum. I'm Charles Forward, Taylor Lance. Call Miranda Schuler, my billet mom, and your local's farmer's agent at 701 838 8144. Oh, what was that? That's the sound of someone getting one of America's fastest refunds from Liberty Tax. Hey, there's mine. Tired of waiting for your tax refund? Let the professionals at Liberty Tax help you discover America's fastest refunds. Find us at LibertyTax.com or call 866-871-1040 today to find a location near you. That's 866-871-1040. Liberty Tax Service, where we put the fun and the speed back into doing your taxes. America's fastest refunds from Liberty Tax. Hi, Taurus fans. I'm Austin Koss. When the Toros get on the bus, the first stop is always at Applebee's. Whether it's Jamestown, Fargo, or Grand Forks, the Toros always get a good meal. The boys like Applebee's so much, we eat at the Minot location, too. Thanks to Applebee's. When we're on the road, the only thing we're hungry for is a win. Applebee's 2 for 20. Now that's eating good in the neighborhood. The sinister cries haunted Mary through the night. Dawn neared and still the voice tormented her. She ran towards the safety of her car, flung open the door, and a coyote had somehow gotten locked inside. But the damaged interior was covered thanks to Farmer's Insurance. Coyote Carpool, August 1st, 2015. Talk to a farmer's agent. We know a thing or two because we've seen a thing or two. We are farmers. Bum, 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 bum. I'm Charles Forward, Taylor Lance. Call Miranda Schuler, my billet mom, and your local's farmer's agent at 701-838-8144. Hey, guys. My name is Steve Olschwanger, fire chief from Maryland Heights, Missouri. I love Firehouse Subs because you can feed your whole crew and help your community thanks to Firehouse Subs. Cato. If you're planning a tailgate, an office holiday party, or anything in between, Firehouse Subs has crowd-pleasing platters starting at just $5 per person. They'll even deliver to you. And of course, you'll be helping your community because a portion of every purchase at Firehouse Subs goes towards helping first responders in our communities. The more subs folks enjoy, the more Firehouse Subs is able to help save lives. Firehouse Subs Catering. Choose from sub, salad, or dessert platters for your next group gathering. Platters start at just $5 a person. Visit FirehouseSubs.com to find a location near you. Firehouse Subs, founded by Fireman. Firehouse of America will donate 0.13% of your purchases in 2017 at all U.S. locations to the Firehouse Subs Public Safety Foundation with a minimum donation of $1 million. For full details, visit FirehouseSubs.com. you got to love fire from Ryan. Hi, this is Carson Wentz. While we have a couple seconds, I'd like to tell you why I'm a fan of Ryan Family Dealerships. They know the only way to win someone's respect, to earn their business, is by meeting and exceeding their expectations. That's why I buy my vehicles here. Whether it's sales, parts, or service, you can be sure they'll go the extra mile for you. Take it from me, you're going to love buying from Ryan. Your hands are a vital part of who you are, how you work, play, even how you communicate. When injury or illness strikes, the hand team at Trinity Health will be there to help restore full functionality. We specialize in surgical repairs, hand reconstruction, non-surgical interventions, and occupational therapies. Don't let damage or disorder take away your hands. See the hand team at Trinity Health. Trinity Health, reinventing health.
It's time for Minotauros Hockey on the Toros Network, AM 1390 KRRZ and HockeyTV.com. Toros Hockey is brought to you by Farmers Union Insurance, Gooseneck Implement, Mattress Firm, Liberty Tax, and Coulter Energy. Now let's go live to the Farmers Union Insurance pregame show with Ken Oda. Hello and welcome inside the Fogarty Arena here in Blaine, Minnesota. Game three of a best of three Robertson Cup semifinal. The Toros take on the Fairbanks Ice Dogs for the right to play in tomorrow's winner takes the cup championship game. Toros forced today's game with a 2-0 win over Fairbanks yesterday. The win came <laughs> with not without its dramatics. The Toros and Dogs played 40 scoreless minutes and then some before Sam Foose put the puck in behind Fairbanks goaltender Josh Benson. But that goal was waved off. The officials decided that Foose kicked that one in. And it looked like the game would remain tied. And in fact, it did, but not for very long. Just 14 seconds later, Miroslav Mucha took a puck off the wall, carried it around the top of the high slot, cut towards the goal, and flicked a backhander over Benson's glove and into the back of the net giving the Toros a 1-0 lead <laughs> once again distracted sorry warm-ups have just ended and once again the Toros go to clean up Fairbanks' pucks Now a league official has waved him off. It was, the last two games, it was the Toros cleaning up the pucks for the Ice Dogs. Today, it'll be someone from the league who does it instead. Anyways, as I was saying, the Toros took a 1-0 lead on Mucha's goal. And then held on. They weren't credited with another shot on goal until Alex Adams hit the empty net. The game itself, the Toros, they were tied with Fairbanks in shots. 14-14 through 2. Then outshot 16-5 to in the third. But the only two that mattered in that third period were Mucha at 6:33 and Adams into the empty net at 18:47. It gave the Toros a 2-0 victory and forced this decisive game three in the best of three series. Taking a look at some of the series leaders, Jax Murray still leads all goal scorers and point getters. Two goals and an assist for Murray. Gives him three points over the first two games of the series. For the Toros, Grant Lovin and Miroslav Mucha, each with a goal and an assist. They're tied for the team lead. Jack Johnston has two assists for Fairbanks. He's the only other multi-point player in the series. In goal, Josh Benson over the first two games, a 9.05 save percentage and even two goals against average Samu Lankala. A 201 goals against average and a 922 save percentage. So can't get much closer than that. And that is why we have today's game three. We will take a commercial break here on the Farmers Union Insurance pregame show. When we come back, we'll hear from Toro's head coach, Marty Murray, about the do or die situation the Toros face this afternoon. Hi, Taros fans. I'm Colby Enns. When the Taros get on the bus, the first stop is always at Applebee's. Whether it's Jamestown, Fargo, or Grand Forks, the Taros always get a good meal. The boys like Applebee's so much, we eat at the Minot location, too. Thanks to Applebee's, when we're on the road, the only thing we're hungry for is a win. Applebee's 2 for 20. Now that's eating good in the neighborhood. Whoa, 
What was that? That's the sound of someone getting one of America's fastest refunds from Liberty Tax. Hey, there's mine. Tired of waiting for your tax refund? Let the professionals at Liberty Tax help you discover America's fastest refunds. Find us at LibertyTax.com or call 866-871-1040 today to find a location near you. That's 866-871-1040. Liberty Tax Service, where we put the fun and the speed back into doing your taxes. America's fastest refunds from Liberty Tax. All in one place, you can get a fabulous coffee, the best burger in town, arrange a meeting for up to 30 people, and begin your next trip, whether business or vacation. It's Minot's newest, most architecturally beautiful, versatile structure, the Minot International Airport. The Trestle Tap House and Cafe with Caribou Coffee and customizable meeting spaces are just a couple of the amenities offered. The Minot International Airport. See the world from home. Captain's Cove Seafood Restaurant invites you in for your favorite seafood as well as steak, chicken, and lots of great burgers and sandwiches. The Cove has fish and chips, crab, shrimp, and all-you-can-eat meals. Captain's Cove, where fishing is made easy. 1735 South Broadway in Minot. Throughout the areas we serve, First International Bank and Trust employees are actively involved in helping our customers and communities grow. This is Kevin Vigested from First International Bank and Trust, member FDIC, equal housing lender. Whether it's coaching a little league team, leading through involvement with nonprofit organizations, or a proud beaver booster, know that all of us at First International Bank and Trust are committed to giving back to the places where we live and work. Welcome back inside the Fogarty Arena here in Blaine, Minnesota, as we get ready for Game 3 of the Best of 3 Robertson Cup Semifinals. Toros and Fairbanks Ice Dogs. The Ice Dogs, essentially the Yankees of the North American Hockey League, 15 consecutive years in the postseason. That, of course, is the longest active streak in the North American Hockey League. The Toros, six years in a row. That is the second longest active active streak among NAHL teams qualifying for the postseason. As I mentioned before the break, talk to Marty Murray about today's game. We will let you give that a listen now. Here with Toros head coach Marty Murray. Marty, I game three, same situation we faced with game five in Aberdeen. What's the feeling among the boys? I think we feel good, you know. I, I uh, Obviously a big game last night, a big win, and uh, you know, we, we, we need to play well, but, you know, there's not a lot of pressure on us. I think the pressure's on them. Um, you know, we just need to play a good, sol- solid game and capitalize on our chances and make sure that we're uh, protecting our house. You know, walk us through the emotions yesterday that the Sam Foose no goal and then right away Miro answering back and getting one that counted. What was it like on the bench for that maybe minute, minute and a half of hockey? Yeah, it was pretty, uh, guys, there's a, uh, certainly a roller coaster of emotions. You know, it was pretty deflating when the food school uh got disallowed and then i think we responded somebody said 17 seconds later so uh obviously a huge goal by miro good power move and a heck of a shot and to get us on the board and up uh you know certainly was a was a pretty good feeling at the time you know miro has been snake bit he probably missed three or four empty nets in the first two rounds see him break through how huge would it be if he can get on his usual hot streak he's kind of been a streaky scorer all year so we were talking about that this morning that you know he gets that one it was a nice goal and uh hopefully that gets uh some puck luck for him and some confidence in for barry you know if he's a guy that uh we can count on producing like he did uh throughout the season uh i mean that's a good good uh, thing for a hockey club you know yesterday's game was pretty even all the way through until we scored and then after the goal seemed like Fairbanks really started to pour it on. What do you guys have to do to keep them from playing today like they did for maybe the last 12 minutes of that game? Well, obviously, if we're playing in the lead, we need to keep playing and kind of force an issue. We can still be aggressive and smart at the same time, but we kind of got back in a shell and and just kind of let them come at us. And, you know, watching the film today, I mean, in the – in the moment you think you're hemmed in and they're all over us, I thought we did a pretty good job of keeping it outside. We had a couple of glaring ones or uh, a D blew by our guy and, and uh, Simon made a huge save. But I thought for the most part everything was kept to the outside. Um, but we're going to have to do a better job. If we get in that position again with the lead, we need to make sure that we uh, keep playing and just don't let them come at us. Samu has been absolutely nails so far. Three shutouts in this postseason. What more can you say about that kid's game? Uh, not much, you know. I mean, uh, 
to to be in the position we're in, uh, you need great goaltending, and and Samu uh, has been that. And you know, we've had a lot of really good goaltenders uh, come through our program, but I don't think anybody's really risen to the occasion that Samu has. He's a uh, kind of on a different uh, planet right now, and and uh, obviously probably the MVP of our of our team here in the playoffs. And and uh, I know guys have a lot of confidence in, with him in the net. Are you shocked he's not committed yet? Uh, yeah, a little bit. Um, you know, I, I think there's a f- some few few things going on too. He's got to make his mind up what he wants to do. I think there's some pro opportunities back home for him, uh, and some college opportunities too. So he's got to, I think, after the Robertson Cup here, decide which way he wants to go, um, and that'll be up to him. Any lineup changes before uh, tonight's game? Yeah, we're gonna get Cost back in, some fresh legs, and then uh, we're gonna uh, take David and raise in a note. Uh, David played real well uh, uh, throughout the playoffs. I just think big body three and three maybe looked a little tired towards the end of the game. So you know that's that's what it takes. It takes uh, you know 25 guys at this time of the year. We have guys in and out, and and we're confident these guys will go in and, and do a good job. All right, I'll let you go. Get ready. Thanks. Thanks, Ken. Once again, that's Toros head coach Marty Murray on the challenges the Toros face this afternoon. That will do it for the Farmers Union Insurance pregame show. The Zamboni is off the ice. We're less than five minutes away from the drop of the puck here on day three of the Robertson Cup tournament semifinal game three. Toros and Fairbanks Ice Dogs. The winner advances to play the Shreveport Mudbugs tomorrow night at 7 o'clock for the chance to hoist the Robertson Cup. We'll have the drop of the puck after these messages here on the Minotauros Network. I'm here at the year's hottest stag pool party. Put your antlers up! Where? Some poor guy's backyard. These stags are bringing down the house. Seriously, deer are ripping holes in the pool cover. There's trampling patio furniture... And all the damage was covered thanks to Farmers Insurance. Stag Pool Party, October 27th, 2014. Talk to a farmer's agent. We know a thing or two because we've seen a thing or two. We are farmers. Bum, 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 bum. I'm Charles Forward, Taylor Lance. Call Miranda Schuler, my billet mom, and your local's farmer's agent at 701-838-8144. Hey, guys. My name is Steve Olschwanger, fire chief from Maryland Heights, Missouri, and I love firehouse subs. Take their meatball sub, for example. It's loaded wall-to-wall with Italian meatballs in a zesty marinara with melted provolone on a toasted roll. And when I say take their meatball sub, I mean it. Grab a medium meatball sub combo to go right now, just six bucks. But don't forget, the reason Firehouse Subs is driven to make the best subs anywhere is simple. The more subs you enjoy, the more they're able to help save lives because a portion of every purchase goes towards first responders in our communities. The Firehouse Sub Meatball Sub Combo. Medium meatball sub, your choice of chips and a 22-ounce drink. Get it hot and ready in our to-go box. Now just $6 for a limited time only. Order online now at firehousesubs.com. Firehouse Subs, founded by Firemen. Firehouse of America will donate 0.13% of your purchases in 2017 at all U.S. locations to the Firehouse Subs Public Safety Foundation with a minimum donation of $1 million. For full details, visit firehousesubs.com. Hi, Toros fans. I'm Alex Adams. When the Toros get on the bus, the first stop is always Applebee's. Whether it's Jamestown, Fargo, or Grand Forks, the Toros always get a good meal. The boys like Applebee's so much, we eat at the Minot location, too. Thanks to Applebee's, when we're on the road, the only thing we're hungry for is a win. Applebee's 2 for 20. Now that's eating good in the neighborhood. Take care of your feet, and they'll take care of you. The foot and ankle specialists at Trinity Health can help with both surgical and non-surgical solutions. So patients who suffer from foot and ankle related issues can say, so long heel pain, catch you later corns, hasta la vista hammer toes. Relieve pain now and help prevent future discomfort. Diagnosis and treatment is available today. Trinity Health, reinventing health. We live in such a fast paced world. It's always go, go, go. When I'm out for a run, it's my time. It's the best way to start your day. Crossing the line of that marathon, it's the biggest reward you can get. I want my customers to achieve their goals and go above and beyond. I'm Nikki Ledeggi, and I'm one of the running experts at Shields. 
Shields, when it comes to gear and expert advice, we're right there with you in Bismarck, Minot, Grand Forks, Fargo, and Moorhead. Hello, I'm Steve Funningsland, consumer lender at First Western Bank and Trust and sports enthusiast. Employees at First Western know the importance of teamwork in their day-to-day banking duties to best serve the community. I know the Minot and surrounding area high school and college athletic teams know the importance of teamwork as well. We want to wish all local teams good luck in their athletic endeavors this year. Stay safe on the courts, on the fields, on the rinks, and in the gyms. We look forward to watching you succeed. With familiar faces you know who know you by name, First Western Bank and Trust, you can bank on us, member FDIC, Equal housing lender. All in one place, you can get a fabulous coffee, the best burger in town, arrange a meeting for up to 30 people, and begin your next trip, whether business or vacation. It's Minot's newest, most architecturally beautiful, versatile structure, the Minot International Airport. The Trestle Tap House and Cafe with Caribou Coffee and customizable meeting spaces are just a couple of the amenities offered. The Minot International Airport. See the world from home. Welcome back inside the Fody Arena here as we are approaching puck drop on game three between the Toros and the Ice Dogs. Toros taking the ice. You can hear the faithful making noise. A notably pro Toros crowd all week here at the Fogarty. Now announcing the starting lineups brought to you by Utapils, the official brewery partner of the 2018 Robertson Cup. Utapils, creating a new tradition in the Twin Cities that brings friends and families together to share good times and great beer. It'll be Marty Hill, the play-by-play voice of the Minnesota Wilderness, doing the PA here in Blaine this weekend.
Pre-game festivities just about out of the way and we're just approaching puck drop now here. Uh, game three of this Robertson Cup semi-final. On the line tonight, Eric McDonald and Cam Dykstra wearing the orange armbands, Trevor Wolford and Sam, Sam Heideman. The Ice Dogs wearing their home white sweaters, white socks, navy, buckets, breezers, and gloves for the Toros. It is the traveling red sweaters, red socks, red buckets, and gloves, black shoulders, and breezers, cream. Names, numbers, and trim for the men from the Magic City. Toros will be working from left to right on your computer monitor or radio dial, depending on how you are tuned in to the Minotauros Network, AM 1390 KRZ and HockeyTV.com. Already have several fans checking in on the Toro Twitter party. You can tweet at Minotauro Hockey, M-I-N-O-T-A-U-R-O-H-O-C-K-E-Y, or at me personally at Ken underscore Oda, K-E-N underscore O-D-A. We'll answer your questions or just say hello as the broadcast goes on. Toros control off the opening draw. Ends looks across the far side. Belial chips it in. It'll roll into the near corner. Let's go Toros chant already going from the Toros fans in the house. Puck freed up on the far side. Pav tries to dump it in. It'll bounce in the far side circle. Gathered there by Schaefer. Schaefer leaves off to the far side. Wilson. Wilson boots it. Belial chases over. He'll try and ring it deep. Wilson cut it off. Wilson has Lovin on his back. He throws across the near side and Jax Murray. The series leading scorer dumps it in. Cross corner to the far side of the Toro zone. Sawchuck blows a tire but keeps possession away from Ruffin at least for a moment. Lovin pins him there. Sawchuck steps in as well. Jax Murray battling, looking up top. Shot from the point coming by Arizic. It's gloved and held by Samu Lankula. For our first whistle, it comes 46 seconds in to this one. We'll get you the starting goaltending numbers. On the postseason, Samu Lankula, 7-3-0, a 1-8-0 goals against, averaging a 9-39 save percentage. In net for the Ice Dogs, Benson, Josh Benson, 6-2-0, a 2-4-1 and 8-7-7. Dogs control off the draw. Another shot. That's blocked up and out of play. Draw will stay in the Toro zone. 19-10 left to go here in period number one. Several fans already checking in. We've got the Goebbels checking in, minus one, of course. Jamie Goebel, Toro's official photographer, made the trip. Far side they dig. Shot from the right circle, goes wide. Austin Dollimer finds it. Dolly looks up ice. Mucha tipped that into the zone. It'll go into the far side corner. Loven chases after. He'll batter with the Rizik. Puck comes around to the near side. Mayhew leaves along the wall. Height. Height touches up for Went, but it's taken away by the Toros. Glass and out. Bouncing puck. Gets through. It's a Rizik. Arizic in his own zone, dogged by Lovin. They take it in behind the net together, and the Toros' Dolomer takes it away. Big collision on the near side. Arizic got the worst of it. Arizic one-hands this ahead. It gets through Lovin, and it's ahead for Caleb Height. Height watched by Rosenbaum. Rosie trying to dangle in. He pushes Height off the puck and then takes it away. He gives it right back to Vanska, however, behind the net. Vanska working there. McGinnis and Muha working on him, and the Toros take it away. Miro flips up ice. It'll be behind Alex Adams. He can't find it. Mayhew does. He banks up the near side. Rosenbaum touches back for Lance. Lance finds Adams into the zone. Alex Adams battles along the wall. Lance pokes at it as well, but it's ahead. Shackle for Vanska. Vanska into the zone on the far near side. He's forced to turn. He looks across. Shot kicked away by Locker. A follow-up try. That goes wide. Lance hacks the rebound to the near side. There's no one at the near point, so the Toros get some relief. Willits looks across. Pass up ice on the near side. Finds Shackle at the red line. He gains the blue on the near. Shackle into the zone. Shot save made by Lankula. Rebound. Goes around to the far side. And Toros it to speed up ice. It's Brian Adams with a shot save made. And then it's played by Benson. Far side. They throw it out to neutral. Toros take over there. Colby ends. Plays ahead for Belial. Belial leaves off Sawchuk. Sawchuk ahead. It's broken up off the stick of Austin Koss. Koss comes into the lineup for David Rison in today. Pass ahead, tack to tape for Talbot, and Talbot leaves off on the near side for Green. He's poked at the line, and the dogs try to turn quickly. Good back check by Koss and Talbot, forcing the dogs to dump it in. It's rolled around to the far side, bouncing puck. Shot blocked, and it caroms out to neutral. Koss couldn't get it and go. Green plays the body, and the puck will roll on net 
where Wankula stops for Sawchuck. 17 minutes to play here in period number one. Shots are 3-1 in favor of the Dogs. Still no score. Saw holding behind the net. Setting up the breakout. Sawchuck, long stretch pass up ice. Green finds it. He couldn't hold it, however. Ruffin boots it as well, and the puck rolls deep into the Fairbanks zone. Mayhew retreats behind his net. Coss up on the pressure. Play to the far side. Give and go play, and now it's ahead. The pass missed Jax Murray. Will it go for icing? It will. It hit the outside of the net. Had that hit the goaltender, it would not have been icing, but because it hit the post, it is. More shout-outs. We've got the usual crew at Fort Hyatt. Michelle and Aaron Bliven. The Coonrods. Lawrence's and Wentworth's. The Mock family. And Shelly Carbo. Meanwhile, Johnston in. Tries a drag move. Backhand shots blocked in behind by Lincoln Earn. And the Toros net came free for a whistle. 16-21. Left to go here in a scoreless first period. Shots on goal 3-1. Favoring the Fairbanks Ice Dogs. Lots of cream and cardinal in the stands today, as there has been all series long. I'd say the two best represented fan bases are the Toros and the Mudbugs. If the Toros can pull this one off, it'll be a raucous atmosphere tomorrow night. Quick shot. That's blocked off. Follow-up try. Unable to pull the trigger was height. Stampahar, shots blocked out in front. Keenan Lund pokes at it, but Hyder finds it. Hyder can't keep it in the zone, however. Keenan Lund looks to attack. Lund chips it on net. Benson tried to play it. He put it onto the stick of Belial, but Belial couldn't get it towards the cage. Stampahar. Turns it over to Belial. Belial spins away from pressure, tries to walk back out front. He's forced to keep it in behind. Banks back to the point. Earn flubbed it, and it goes right onto the stick of Caleb Height. Height carries into the zone, leaves off to the near side, and went sliding poke by Pavel, and now a high stick coming. The Toros will get the game's first power play as Foos just caught a stick to the face. Toros will go to the power play, and... It has not been particularly powerful this postseason. One for 28 are the Toros on the playoffs all postseason long. The one goal came early in the Aberdeen series. The Ice Dogs 87.5% on the kill, allowing four power play goals against in 32 chances. Toros control off the draw. Sawchuk holds at the blue line, comes across to Muka. Miro back up for Saw, right back to Miro. Miro. Walks in. Shot blocked off. Follow-up try. Gets hacked wide. Ends. Throws it in behind. He was looking for Lovin, but it's taken away. And cleared the length. 142 on the man advantage as Longula stops out behind his net. He gives to Sawchuck, and the Toros will start up the ice once again. Saw straight up the middle. Drops one back for Miro. Miro comes across for Alex Adams. Adams dumps it in cross corner. Toros will chase. Arizic looks to hammer it ahead, and he does clear all the way down. Lankala out of his net stops that. He's pressured, and he'll throw over to the far side, and Sawchuk. Sawchuk comes ahead for Alex Adams. Adams pushing play towards the offensive zone, gains the line, drops a pass for Muha, but it's taken away and clear. And now Height gets it away from Rosenbaum, walks in, save made by Lankala. Follow-up try, hacked wide to the cage. Delayed call coming, and it's a slash on Rosie. So with a minute gone on the Toros power play, a penalty call comes and evens it up. And we will go four aside for the next 60 seconds. The Alexanders are checking in. The Koopmans as well. Back in the Magic City, all rooting for the Toros. This is Foose. Holding behind the Toro net. Sam Foos starts up the middle. Fu flips it down in the corner. Talbot gives chase. Wilson couldn't corral it. Cost plays back to Foos. Foos tries a shot. It's blocked into the corner. Talbot gives chase. The Ice Dogs just punted that out to neutral. Perhaps Wilson forgot that it was now four on four. 
Foose chopped it to the blue line. Bluger turns it for Wilson. Wilson has space as the Toros are mid-change. This is Vanska into the zone. Leaves for Bluger. Bluger forced to turn by Pavel. Looks up top. Orizic shot blocked. <laughs> Pavel turning. Lost the handle on the slot. Toros glass and out. That was still five on or four on four, so it goes for icing. So the Toros aren't allowed to change. Lund, Pavel, Foose, and Earn. The quartet out for the Toros. Urizak, Ruffin, Murray, and Height. The four that Trevor Stewart's tossed over the wall. 50 50 draw. Loose in the skates, finally dug out, and the Ice Dogs come full strength. Power play for a minute. This is Ruffin. Drops back for Rizek. Did well to keep that in the zone. Now he comes across for Went. Went. Shot blocked by Pavel. Buck rolls to the far side wall. Up top for Rizek. Rizek leaves off far side. Back up top of Rizek. Comes across to Ruffin. Ruffin leaves to the near side. Back up top of Rizek. Thought about it. Drops side of the net. They go back up top. And that missed everyone. 27 seconds left on the power play. Down the wall, they battle. Earn won it. His pass ahead for Pavel was off the mark. Arizic holds. Arizic delays. Now will carry down low. Leaves him behind the net. Lincoln Earn poked it free, but went able to find it. Toros are gassed. They've been trapped out after the icing. This is Ruffin. Ruffin. Shot blocked in front. Follow-up try. That's blocked as well. Rebound in behind. Jax Murray leaves it back in behind. Toros come full strength. And it's tipped up and out of play for a whistle. Toros will get a change they desperately need. One, two, three, four showing on the game clock. 12.34 to play. Toros and Ice Dogs are scoreless. Shots on goal. Still 3-1 in favor of the Ice Dogs, meaning neither team got a shot on goal on their power play. Draw. Controlled by Vanska and the Dogs. Vanska around behind the Toro net. Sawchuk forcing him to turn. They dig. Finally it squirts back to the point. Stampahar shot blocked. Follow up try. Save made by Lankula. No rebound given. That's not booing. They're Samuing over in the Toros fan section. Off the draw, Brian Adams can't clear. Now we'll shovel it back around to the near side and Taylor Lance. Lance from the hash marks in his own zone on the near wall. Throws up ice, but it's kept in by the Dogs. Good battle there. Frees it up by Sawchuck for Lance. Lance starts Brian Adams ahead. Four on two as the Toros hit the blue line. Brian Adams looks across. He has ends. Ends can't control. Now he spins it back side. Brian Adams couldn't pull the trigger. Now he does. Shot save made. Rebound kicked ahead. Shackle looking to go the other way. Two on one. Pass in for Vanska. Shot save made by Lankala. As this game's opened up a little bit, end to end, Taylor Lance now will chip it, and the Toros will get a change. Schaefer's back on it, leaves back to the near side, and Wilson, Dolomer pressuring him. It's throwing up ice to the far side. McGinnis finds it, banks back out to neutral. Loven turns with it, flicks ahead for Mucha. It results in a scrum. Able to find it is Loven. Loven cuts through. Shot. That missed wide, and it rings around to the near side. Picked up by Chilton. He carries over the red and the blue. Chilton delays. Shot blocked by Rosenbaum. Puck poked ahead. Odd man rushed the other way. Loven. Scott Dalmer with him. Loven delays. Drops for Rosenbaum. He's got it taken down from behind. And the whistle goes. Toros will go to the power play. It's a slash is the call. And Schaefer goes. Toros back to the power play with 11.03. Left to go here in period number one. Shots on goal, four to two in favor of the Ice Dogs. A moment, but eventually it's poked out to neutral. Rosenbaum. Chased all the way back behind the Toro net. Ten and a half to play here in period number one. We're still scoreless. Near side, Rosenbaum. Into the middle for Foose. Dumped in. 
Lund gives chase, but it's hammered around to the near side. Rosie kept it, chopped it down the wall. Lund trying to settle it down, kept at the point. Lance holding, looks up top for Rosenbaum. Rosie flicks one on net, that's gobbled up and held for a whistle. 59 seconds left on the power play. 10.02 left to go here in period number one. Still no score. Draw in the far circle. Eventually found by Fairbanks and cleared the length. Blancola out of his net to stop. This is played ahead. Mucha gains the line. Miro leaves off far side for Loven. Loven holds. Tries to go back to the point. Puck bounces into the corner after hitting an ice dog in the face. Muha hustles over and keeps this. Miro. Pressured at the line. Gives to Enns. Enns looks across. Touched up top for Sawchuk. Sawchuk will set it up. 24 seconds. Shot save made. Rebound given into the corner. Hammered around to the near side. And Miro couldn't reach it. It's going to be a rush the other way for Caleb Height. Height watched by Sawchuk. Tries a shot blocker save. Rebound left in the near side corner. This is Enns. Enns drops back. Sawchuk. Ahead finds Mucha. Miro in. Leaves off for Green. Green couldn't handle it. Now will battle him behind as the dogs come full strength. Mucha works down low. It squirts out front. The Toros couldn't find it. Mayhew on the far side. Dogged by Pavel. Ice dogs control. Come to the near side and went. Went into the zone. Shot blocked out front. Tossed to the far side. This is Johnston. Jax Murray. Stuff play doesn't go, and the puck was covered by Lankala. Eight twenty-seven to go here in period number one. Still no score. Draw will be to the left of Lankala. Shots on goal, 6-3 in favor of the Dogs. Pavel to take the draw for the Toros against Chilton. Chilton wins it sideways. It's poked back to the point in Stampahar. His shot's blocked out front by Pavel. Pav plays ahead. It's out to neutral ice. Lund pokes at it. Rosenbaum finds it and gains the line. Rosie tries a shot. It's blocked up and over. Pavel on it. Guides it around to the near side. Lund. Lund. Throws it deep for Belial. Belial keeps it moving in behind. Stampahar. Far side. Pavel got a stick on that pass. And Lund keeps it at the line. Chops it down the wall. Pavel finds it. Pav working to the hash marks. Looking to center. It hits a skate and bounces back to the point. Couldn't find it. Could McGinnis. And now Hyder lost it in the snow in front of the bench. Dumped down into the Toro zone. Back on it is McGinnis. Chilton's up on him. The two 16s come together. But the puck's along to the near side. And 17, Keenan Lund. Lund pokes it out to neutral. Wilson chips it in. It would have been a delayed offside. That's the reason he couldn't carry over the line. Toros take back over. D to D in their own zone. Ends drops back to McGinnis. McGinnis makes a move around Vanska. Connor McGinnis carries into the zone. The defenseman leads the rush. Throws a back air. Front tip play. It's in. Michael Talbot and the Toros lead 1-0. What a play on the rush by Talbs. And McGinnis. Michael Talbot scores to give the Toros a 1-0 lead with 7.26 to play in period number one. Loven and Hyder, a pair of nines on the draw. Mucha stepped into. Back on the attack. The dog shot save made by Lankala.
Draw will be to the left of Lankala. Toros credited with a goal, but not a shot on goal. That's a nifty trick. Meanwhile, Hyder drops down low. Jam play doesn't go. Lankala couldn't cover it. Puck squirts free to the far side. Odd man rush for the Toros. Loven pushing play up the far side. Dogs do a good job of getting back. Shot that goes wide. Rebound comes to the side of the net. They'll dig there. Loven comes out with it from the scrum. Using his body to protect his turning in the far circle. Loven back down the wall. Now he leaves. Dolomir comes up top for Foose. Foose shot that goes wide. Broken stick laying behind the ice dog net. It's Mayhew and he can't play this puck because of it. That leaves Dolomir. Dolomir pinned to the wall there. Mucha plays up top. Earn. Earn. Delays. Now he comes to Foose. Foose flips one on net. Blocked off in front. Follow up try. Hacked that second try. Won't go either. Height flicks out to neutral ice. Foose looks to settle it down. Earn pokes ahead for Mucha. Miro stepped into at the red line. Puck lays loose. Johnson couldn't get it. Lance looking to get it and go. Carried into the zone by the Ice Dogs, however. Johnson leaves it to the near side. Roughing back to Johnson. Good poke check there by Foos. Meanwhile, Ruffin takes it back from Lance. Lance takes it back from him and tries to chip up the wall. Big hit on the near side. Alex Adams just dumped Willits. The Toros take over. Lance banks that out. It won't go far enough for icing. It doesn't make it to the goal line. 5.45, a palindrome on the clock here in period number one. Toros lead 1-0. Shots on goal, 7-5 in favor of the Dogs. Speaking of Dogs, Pavel absolutely dogging Ruffin. Forced him to give it up. Now the Toros trying to take it away in the offensive zone. Three men deep. Better get back. Stampahar, the defenseman, leads the rush the other way. Stampahar, power move to the net. Backhand try. Save made by Lankula. Rebound to the far side. Brian Adams finds it. Three on two for the Toros on the attack. Adams controls on the far wall. Tries a shot. Save made. Fat rebound given, but the Toros were in too deep. Meanwhile, passes ahead. Went on the attack. He's alone. Tries a shot. Blocked out front by Connor McGinnis. They dig in behind the Toro net. Lund trying to dig it out. Rosenbaum's there as well. Lund wins the battle. Tries to carry out from behind. He does. Softly chips it up for Talbot. The Toro's goal scorer. Gives off to Koss. Toro's are in. Koss fires a shot that's blockered up off the glass. Talbot taken into the wall on the far side. Koss steps in as well. They dig on that far side corner. They continue to dig. 4-4-2 left on the clock here in period number one. Toro's lead 1-0 on Talbot's goal. Puck squirts free, poked towards the cage. Went cuts it off before it rolls to the goaltender. Green on the pressure, but it's along the near side. Went drops back. Schaefer looks up ice, touched in by Chilton. The dogs need a change. The Toros can retreat and retrieve unmolested. Far side, Colby ends, clears the zone, and then runs over Rizak. Puck pushed down into the Fairbanks end. Arizak and Enns had some words at the end of game one. I'd be willing to bet that that was on Colby's mind as he delivered that hit. Meanwhile, it's ahead for Shackle. Shackle over the red line, gains the blue as well. Trying to pull the trigger, he cannot. Now we'll just roll it deep. Bluger down low, throws in front. Shackle, save made by Lankala. Comes up huge, does Samu. Tanner Shackle, who absolutely killed the Toros with six goals over four meetings in the regular season, had a glorious chance, but Samu was able to answer. Toros clear after another good save by Samu. And the Dogs need a change. 3.20 left to go here in period number one. Connor McGinnis holds behind the Toro net, comes off to the far side, and Lance. Lance banks out to neutral. Dogs have men in deep, so Went just has to dump it. Delayed offside. Lankel out of his net. Stops for Earn. Earn, met by Hyder, wins the battle anyways. Link looks up ice for Wilson. Wilson can't hold the blue line. Went will play across to his defense partner, Schaefer, in their own zone. Ahead, Lincoln Earn takes it away. Toro's back on the attack. Link delays. Now he comes across. Adams misses a wide open side. Puck was bouncing. Adams had to try and one-time it, and he just couldn't get good wood on it. Rung around behind to the far side. Went. Went. Forced to turn by McGinnis. Now it's flicked out. Caleb Height can't keep it away from Rosenbaum. Rosie trying to attack quickly into the zone. Rosenbaum 
Carries deep, but now he'll wisely pull off. Pass ahead for Jax Murray. Keenan Lund steps into him. Keenan Lund ties Jax Murray up. Follow-up try, shot wide anyways. They dig in behind the Toro net. Keenan Lund is laying on top of it. He's able to regain his skates. Puck rolls to the far corner. Ruffin guides it back to the point. Snap hard comes across for Willits. Willits dumps it down low again. Jax Murray forced to turn. Throws down low. He comes out front. The only man there is Connor McGinnis. Again, banks around to the near side. Lund touches into the middle. A pair of Toros over skate. Ruffin takes back over. Dogs are changing. Ruffin doing well to keep that away from the Toros. It's flipped ahead and out. Toros get some relief. Stampahar with 103 seconds at his own blue line. Banks ahead for Wentz. It's out of his reach. Rosie flicks that ahead. And apparently that caught the rafters. 95 seconds left to go in period number one. Shots on goal, 8-6 in favor of Fairbanks. But shots in goal, 1-0 in favor of Toros. Draw will be to the right of Samu. Talbot and Bluger. Dogs control for a moment. Green takes it away and chips ahead. Ryan Green, speed to the outside, gets around Mayhew. Green, a power move. Shot, where is it? It's in behind. Talbot on the far side. Plays down the wall for Green. Green looking into the middle. He missed Koss and... It trickles out to neutral. Colby Enns has it there. Looks to push play back into the zone. Ends with a nice move. Gains the line. Tries to throw one on net. It's blocked. It ends up in the corner. Talbot can't find it. Green does. Ryan Green plays back to the point. And Sawchuk. Sawchuk shot. That's blocked off into the corner. Arizic tied up with Koss. Green works it to the front. It ends up back to the point. And Sawchuk. Sawchuk shot. Tip goes wide by Green. We're under a minute to play in the period as Talbot leaves it deep in the zone. Far side. Poked at. And now it's flicked out to neutral. Shackle, two Toros back. Shackle delays. He missed Bluger with the pass, and it comes all the way back to the red line. Wilson back on the attack. His shot's blocked up and over by Mucha. Caleb Height finds a loose puck at the far side hash marks. He's stepped into him behind Foose. Foose uses his foot to win that battle as he's tied up with Went. Hyder's in there as well. 27 seconds left in the period as they dig. Puck tied up along the wall. Sawchuk finds it, flips ahead, but it's kept to the point. Shot blocked out front. Sawchuk banks it to the far wall. Talbot has his skates taken out from under him. Toros win the battle, and Talbs flips that ahead. It'll go. It'll check up. It won't go far enough for icing. Five seconds left in the period. Muha trying to take it away and work it to the front. Toros can't pull the trigger, and the horn will sound. We're through 20 minutes of play here in the Robertson Cup semifinal. Toros lead by a score of one to nothing. We'll keep it here as it's time for an intermission interview. Let's kick it down to the ice with NHL correspondent Stephanie Odie, who is with Fairbanks Ice Dogs head coach Trevor Stewart. Let's see what Trevor Stewart has to say. Maybe. All right, Stuart, this was a high-pressured one. It was very quick in the pace. How do you slow this one down and make sure you control that pressure? Well, we had our chance. we got to figure out a way to bury. We can't give them so much in transition, and that's what's killing us right now. Giving too much transition, not picking up guys going to the net. Definitely had the advantage in game one. No goals until that third period. How do you quicken this up in the second period? Well, we, we've got to get guys in the net. We've got to get skates going through the crease. And, and when we have a shot, we got to take it. We can't stick hand or overhandle the puck coming into the zone. All or nothing mentality. What do you tell the team right now? That's just it. All or nothing. Here we go. Thank you, Coach. Thank you. Once again, that was Fairbanks head coach Trevor Stewart on what his club needs to do better to tell us what our club needs to work on. I've got Toro's assistant general manager, Chris Lonke. Chris? All or nothing game, you get out to a one nothing lead, got to be pretty happy with that. Yep, uh, they're saying the same message. You just keep everything simple. One Win one shift at a time, one period at a time, and we've won the first period, and now uh, we need to regroup and focus on the good things we need to do in the second period. How about the just the, the way this team has played all season long? It seems like we need to have our backs up against the wall almost. 
Yeah, I mean, you just you can feel it in the room. You can feel it at dinner. Uh, they really believe in each other. They know their roles, um, and they're just going to do whatever it takes. They're they're not going to be done here today until they give everything they got. Uh, a kid like Michael Talbot, a second year Toro, he scored some pretty big goals over his Toro career. I, none bigger than this one so far. You know, he's one of the Minnesota guys you found. What is it about Talbot that he's able to step up in the big moments? What it is is he's got a fire in his belly. You know what I mean? Junior hockey is a tough grind, so over two years you're going to have your phases and ups and downs. But when it comes down to it, Michael Tab Talbot has a huge passion for competition and a fire in his belly. You know, overall that first period, shots on goal, 8-6 in favor of Fairbanks, but really it was the Toros who got the better of the chances. I, Alex Adams mm -hmm. just missed putting the Toros up 2-0 yeah. on another great rush play. It looks like the Toros are just a faster team today so far. Uh, right now, they're, they're we're playing well. Confidence. I mean, Lincoln looking at Al there. I mean, obviously, just got on end. You know, whose stick would you want it on more than Al Adams, right? And and McGinnis's confidence coming there. That was no hope play. I mean, I was standing right down there. He's peeking over his shoulder. He waited for Talbot to get into that space and feathered it over there. It was a fantastic play by McGinnis on the rush, and we've seen him develop over the course of the season. You know, I think he's at his best when he is using his feet and skating the puck out of trouble in the defensive zone and transitioning to the attack quickly. Yeah, what we'll see over time here, the rest of this year, which is going to be today and tomorrow, and then going into next year is that he's he's got offensive upside too. He's got sneaky offensive ability. He's doing a smart job in his first year junior. Number one, defend, don't give up goals, and you'll see a little bit of offense off the rush just like that uh, uh, next year as well. All right, well, I'll let you go get down to the locker room and Get ready for period number two. Thanks for coming up. No problem. Once again, that's Toro's assistant and general manager, Chris Lonke. We'll take a commercial break. When we come back, we'll take a look at the happy math so far this afternoon. Toro's lead, one nothing in a winner advances to the final game three here at Fogarty Ice Arena in Blaine, Minnesota on the Minotauros Network. Hi, Taros fans. I'm Colby Enns. When the Taros get on the bus, the first stop is always at Applebee's. Whether it's Jamestown, Fargo, or Grand Forks, the Taros always get a good meal. The boys like Applebee's so much, we eat at the Minot location, too. Thanks to Applebee's, when we're on the road, the only thing we're hungry for is a win. Applebee's 2 for 20. Now that's eating good in the neighborhood. Okay. Whoa, what was that? That's the sound of someone getting one of America's fastest sure. refunds from awesome. Liberty Tax. Hey, there's Thank mine. You. Tired of waiting for your tax refund? Let the professionals at Liberty Tax help you discover America's fastest refunds. Find us at LibertyTax.com or call 866-871-1040 today to find a location near you. That's 866-871-1040. Liberty Tax Service, where we put the fun and the speed back into doing your taxes. America's fastest refunds from Liberty Tax. All in one place, you can get a fabulous coffee, the best burger in town, arrange a meeting for up to 30 people, and begin your next trip, whether business or vacation. It's Minot's newest, most architecturally beautiful, versatile structure, the Minot International Airport. The Trestle Tap House and Cafe with Caribou Coffee and customizable meeting spaces are just a couple of the amenities offered. The Minot International Airport. See the world from home. Captain's Cove Seafood Restaurant invites you in for your favorite seafood as well as steak, chicken, and lots of great burgers and sandwiches. The Cove has fish and chips, crab, shrimp, and all-you-can-eat meals. Captain's Cove, where fishing is made easy. 1735 South Broadway in Minot. Throughout the areas we serve, First International Bank and Trust employees are actively involved in helping our customers and communities grow. This is Kevin Vigested from First International Bank and Trust, member FDIC, equal housing lender. Whether it's coaching a little league team, leading through involvement with nonprofit organizations, or a proud Beaver booster, know that all of us at First International Bank and Trust are committed to giving back to the places where we live and work. Welcome back inside the Fogarty Ice Arena. You've got the Gooseneck Implement Intermission Report. Ken Oda here, and Tim, I'm going to put your last name, so I'll just let you say it. <laughs> Mole helped. Hey, it's okay. Mole helped. All right. Uh, from the Wilkes-Barre Scranton Knights, who unfortunately saw their season end last night. But, uh, Tim, 
overall, you guys have a lot to be proud of. You guys had a heck of a run and a couple fantastic games. Yeah, I think, uh, you know, uh, you're saying a lot of the same things that I think a lot of the people around this team have said in the last 24 hours, uh, or really the last 12 hours or so. Um, you know, it's, it's it's a tough loss to take. But, yeah, this is a team that, you know, really, I, I think even some of our own staff, not necessarily the coaching staff, but sure. within our organization, we're a little surprised at the run that was all of a sudden able to come together, not because of a shortage of talent, just because we've had a little bit of a roller coaster second half to the year. And, uh, yeah, you know what, Shreveport's a really good team. They came out, they played a really physical game, and, you know, we had a good stretch yesterday where it looked good. And then, you know, a couple bad bounces, a couple bad penalties that we took, and, um, you know, it's, it's it's hockey for you, but you know what? It was a it was a great experience to be here. I know the guys are are gonna process it in their own way, but um, you know what? It was it was a fun ride. Well, you know, I think the East is very similar to the Central in that there isn't that punching bag team. You know, Northeast Generals last year were that, but they've improved considerably this right. year. You know, it's not like maybe the South or the Midwest where you've got some of those teams that you know. All right, we've got two points tonight. We just got to mm-hmm. put the uniforms on and we'll win. You know, so I think what you guys were able to do is the three seed as well. I, I think everyone expected Philly to come out of that division, and, and you guys not only beat them but swept them as well. Yeah, and I think, you know what, that at the end of the day, it's not going to be looked at it probably by our staff that way, but that was a, a pretty big feather in the cap just because yeah. Philadelphia was the team that swept us in the first two years in the playoffs. Um, you know, and, and, and there's a, a good rivalry between the staffs in, uh, for both teams. They're sure. good friends away from yeah. the ice, but when it gets going, they get competitive just like everybody else. And, uh, and, and I think that was a major, major step forward for the program. You mentioned, yeah, I mean, in, in, in the East, there has been that one team that struggled year one for, for the East division and, and our program at yeah. the NHL level was us. Um, and I think, you know, uh, Jake Rosenbaum. He was actually a carryover, so he he, he uh, could probably attest to that a little bit as well here for Minot now. But um, you know, I think there's been a lot of growth. I think you know, and that's the impressive thing with with the NHL. I think as a whole, is teams just seem to get better and better each year. I mean, everyone has their down years, sure, but uh, it's it's been pretty impressive to see. I mean, I've been with the Knights since they've jumped into the NHL ranks, and uh, uh, just the progress each year has been really really cool to watch, and and of course, call games for. Now, you guys are here. I see, I've seen a lot of your players kicking around. Obviously, you're here watching the game. As, as a uh, unbiased party, what was yeah. your impression of that first period? Oh, it was pretty impressive. A lot of fast physical hockey. And uh, you know what? Your guys are, are you're, you're the Minotauros out there are playing a really strong game. I think, you know, we saw Fairbanks. They came to us in uh, January, and then we went out there to see them in, in Alaska in February. And they're a really impressive team. They've just, they're that constant perennial powerhouse. And, uh, you know, it's, 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 uncommon for us to see them kind of back on their heels a little bit and I think that's what Minot was able to do now obviously Fairbanks came back down the ice had some good chances but uh, the goaltender now it's my turn to yeah. ask a pronunciation Lankala Lankala okay he, I mean I've watched him since you know since you guys got here and and bits and pieces and he is really impressive when those chances do get to him but overall I mean it's the same story that I've seen every time I pop my head into one of these games it's pretty low shot totals a lot of a lot of speed physicality as I said but you know, Long Killa and, and, and the Minotauros as a whole, I thought were pretty impressive in that first. Um, you guys seem to really have a good buzz there going, uh, especially, you know, forcing a couple of penalties. Yeah, you know, unfortunately our power play hasn't been able to cash in. I believe we just have one power play goal all postseason. Hopefully that doesn't come back to haunt us. But um, thanks for coming up, killing yeah. some time. I appreciate it, and good luck uh, the rest of the way. Absolutely, Ken. appreciate it. And, uh, hey, best of luck to you guys. Thank you. That's Tim Mullenhelp from the Wilkes-Barre Scranton Knights. We'll keep it here and take a look at the scoring summary. It was Michael Talbot from Connor McGinnis. Talbot gets his first of the postseason. Connor McGinnis assist number four. He came at 12.34 of the first. It's the only goal of the game thus far. Shots on goal. It's listed as 8-6 on the scoreboard, but 8-7 8-7 the official totals on the score sheet. That gives the Toros just a one-shot deficit against the Dogs, but a one-goal lead. Obviously, Samuel Lankula 8 for 8. Josh Benson 6 for 7 in that period. Toros 0 for 2 on the power play. Hunter went and Nolan Schaefer both went. Jake Rosenbaum took the Toros loan penalty. In the first, and the Toros killed that off as well. 
That will do it for the Gooseneck Implement Intermission Report. We'll take a break. When we come back, we'll have the start of period number two here on the Minotauros Network. I'm here at the year's hottest stag pool party. Put your antlers up! Where? Some poor guy's backyard. These stags are bringing down the house. Seriously, deer are ripping holes in the pool cover. There's trampling patio furniture. And all the damage was covered thanks to Farmers Insurance. Stag Pool Party, October 27th, 2014. Talk to a farmer's agent. We know a thing or two because we've seen a thing or two. We are farmers. Bum, 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 bum. I'm Charles Forward, Taylor Lance. Call Miranda Schuler, my billet mom, near locals farmer's agent at 701 838 8144. Hey guys, my name is Steve Olschwanger, Fire Chief from Maryland Heights, Missouri, and I love Firehouse Subs. Take their meatball sub, for example. It's loaded wall-to-wall with Italian meatballs in a zesty marinara with melted provolone on a toasted roll. And when I say take their meatball sub, I mean it. Grab a medium meatball sub combo to go right now, just six bucks. But don't forget, the reason Firehouse Subs is driven to make the best subs anywhere is simple. The more subs you enjoy, the more they're able to help save lives because a portion of every purchase goes towards first responders in our communities. The Firehouse Sub Meatball Sub Combo. Medium meatball sub, your choice of chips and a 22-ounce drink. Get it hot and ready in our to-go box. Now just $6 for a limited time only. Order online now at firehousesubs.com. Firehouse Subs, founded by firemen. Firehouse of America will donate 0.13% of your purchases in 2017 at all U.S. locations to the Firehouse Subs Public Safety Foundation with a minimum donation of $1 million. For full details, visit firehousesubs.com. Hi, Toros fans. I'm Alex Adams. When the Toros get on the bus, the first stop is always Applebee's. Whether it's Jamestown, Fargo, or Grand Forks, the Toros always get a good meal. The boys like Applebee's so much, we eat at the Minot location, too. Thanks to Applebee's, when we're on the road, the only thing we're hungry for is a win. Applebee's two for 20. Now that's eating good in the neighborhood. Take care of your feet and they'll take care of you. The foot and ankle specialist at Trinity Health can help with both surgical and non-surgical solutions. So, patients who suffer from foot and ankle related issues can say, so long heel pain, catch you later corns, hasta la vista hammer toes. Relieve pain now and help prevent future discomfort. Diagnosis and treatment is available today. Trinity Health, reinventing health. We live in such a fast paced world. It's always go, go, go. When I'm out for a run, it's my time. It's the best way to start your day. Crossing the line of that marathon, it's the biggest reward you can get. I want my customers to achieve their goals and go above and beyond. I'm Nikki Ledeggi, and I'm one of the running experts at Shields. Shields, when it comes to gear and expert advice, we're right there with you in Bismarck, Minot, Grand Forks, Fargo, and Moorhead. Hello, I'm Steve Funningsland, consumer lender at First Western Bank and Trust and sports enthusiast. Employees at First Western know the importance of teamwork and their day-to-day banking duties to best serve the community. I know the Minot and surrounding area high school and college athletic teams know the importance of teamwork as well. We want to wish all local teams good luck in their athletic endeavors this year. Stay safe on the courts, on the fields, on the rinks, and in the gyms. We look forward to watching you succeed. With familiar faces you know who know you by name, First Western Bank and Trust, you can bank on us, member FDIC, equal housing lender all in one place you can get a fabulous coffee the best burger in town arrange a meeting for up to 30 people and begin your next trip whether business or vacation it's minot's newest most architecturally beautiful versatile structure the minot international airport The Trestle Tap House and Cafe with Caribou Coffee and customizable meeting spaces are just a couple of the amenities offered. The Minot International Airport. See the world from home. Whoa, what was that? That's the sound of someone getting one of America's fastest refunds from Liberty Tax. Hey, there's mine. Tired of waiting for your tax refund? Let the professionals at Liberty Tax help you discover America's fastest refunds. Find us at LibertyTax.com or call 866-871-1040 today to find a location near you. That's 866-871-1040. Liberty Tax Service, where we put the fun and the speed back into doing your taxes. America's fastest refunds from Liberty Tax. The sinister cries haunted Mary through the night. 
Dawn neared and still the voice tormented her. She ran towards the safety of her car, flung open the door, and a coyote had somehow gotten locked inside. But the damaged interior was covered thanks to Farmer's Insurance. Coyote Carpool, August 1st, 2015. Talk to a farmer's agent. We know a thing or two because we've seen a thing or two. We are farmers. Bum, 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 bum. I'm Charles Forward, Taylor Lance. Call Miranda Schuler, my billet mom, and your local's farmer's agent at 701-838-8144. Hey, guys. My name is Steve Olschwanger, fire chief from Maryland Heights, Missouri. I love Firehouse Subs because you can feed your whole crew and help your community thanks to Firehouse Subs Catering. If you're planning a tailgate, an office holiday party, or anything in between, Firehouse Subs has crowd-pleasing platters starting at just $5 per person. They'll even deliver to you. And of course, you'll be helping your community because a portion of every purchase at Firehouse Subs goes towards helping first responders in our communities. The more subs folks enjoy, the more Firehouse Subs is able to help save lives. Firehouse Subs Cater. Choose from sub, salad, or dessert platters for your next group gathering. Platters start at just $5 a person. Visit FirehouseSubs.com to find a location near you. Firehouse Subs, founded by firemen. Firehouse of America will donate 0.13% of your purchases in 2017 at all U.S. locations to the Firehouse Subs Public Safety Foundation with a minimum donation of $1 million. For full details, visit FirehouseSubs.com. Welcome back inside the Fogarty Arena here in Blaine, Minnesota. Game three of the best of three Robertson Cup semifinal. Toros lead the Fairbanks Ice Dogs one to nothing through 20 minutes. Toros win leading after one in the postseason, just 1-0-0. Fairbanks has only trailed after one once before. They won that game, so both teams... 1-0 and oh in this situation. Toros control off the draw. Ends has trouble with the official. And that results in a turnover. Puck comes to the side of the net. It's onto the stick of Pavel. Dumped in far side corner. They dig along the wall. Pavel loses it in behind. They dig along the far wall. Pav. Plays it behind. Belisle trying to come out. Now he'll just leave for Lund. Kicks it right back to Belisle. Tries to get it back to the point, but it's taken away. Ahead, Johnston puts it behind Murray, and Murray will just spin it deep. Blancola out of his net. Stops for Sawchuk. Saw. Thought about it. Now he'll just play across for Lincoln Earn. Earn comes ahead for Muha. Muha couldn't control. It's back ahead for Went. Went. Delays. Good step in by Loven. Frees that puck up. Loven lost the handle now. Taken back. Muha gains the line. Miro into the middle. It hit Loven in the skate. Ends up in behind. Miro tries to spin it to the front and Dolomer, but it's taken away. Far side on the rush. Height. Shot goes up and over. Rebound around to the near side. And Muha, but he overskated it. It took a weird carom off the boards. 18 and a half to play here in period number two. Toros still lead by one. Earn lost his stick. He steps into height and the puck rolls free. Vanska, height and Earn jousting. Earn was trying to get back to his stick and height wouldn't let him. Meanwhile, Lance on the attack dangles through. Taylor Lance forced him behind after a nice move. Lost the handle in behind. Mucha takes it away. Miro trying to shovel it back to the point, but it never got there. It's cut off. Lance steps in. Miro pokes at it. It's out to McGinnis in the neutral zone. His dump in's blocked off. Shackle can't take it. This time, McGinnis just chips it in. Stapahar's on it. Pass taken away by Brian Adams, and the Toros control in their own zone. McGinnis ahead. Brian Adams boots it. It ends up on net, so no icing. Left off to the far side. Alex Adams applies pressure. Now it comes to the near corner. Dogs are on it there. McGinnis takes it away and dumps it right back in. A tip by Stampahar. Almost confused their goaltender. Willits goes hard into the wall. And the Toros control. Ice Dogs fans want a penalty. I don't think they'll get one. Or that they should. Stampahar on the attack. Looks across. Shot save made by Wankara. Rebounding behind. Near side. Back to the point. Schaefer shot tipped and gloved and held by Wankawa. Chilton right in his grill. 17-11 left to go. Here in the second, Toro's lead. 1-0. Our being outshot. 
Fairbanks fans getting on the officials. Near side, Wilson. He throws one up that somehow doesn't hit any of the rafters, so no whistle. They dig along the near wall. Talbot finds it, flicks ahead onto the tape of Green. Green pokes it into the middle, then it's taken away and chopped out to neutral ice. Talbot steps into Mobley. It's left on the far side. Chilton rolls it deep. Around to the near side, Hyder. Talbot takes it away, chops it to the far wall. Chilton and Green. Green wins a battle. It comes across for Koss. Schaefer stepped into by Koss. It was dumped on net. Lankala stopped it. It's left for Sawchuk. Comes across for Koss. Koss looks far side. It's out of the reach of Green. He'll catch the carom and gain the line on the far side. Green knows his mates are changing, so he'll just softly chip that in behind the Fairbanks net. Pass ahead. Johnson couldn't find it. No icing. They'll say he won the race. So Earn plays around to the far side. Lund pokes at it. Pavel finds it. Pav chips off the wall, looks to chase it down himself. He's taken off of it. Now he finds it. Pavel, shot blocked. Comes to the near side and Earn. Earn puts it deep. Belial's working there. Pavel closes off the wall. Now he looks to work and make that one. Bank back to the point. Shot coming. What's the whistle? The Fairbanks net moved. The Fairbanks net was off. That's the reason for the whistle. 15.47 left to go here in the second. Toros get an offensive zone draw. Loven and Ruffin to take this draw. A 50-50 puck finally controlled by Hyder. A diving poke by Loven frees it up. It rolls behind the net. Arizic's there. Arizic tries the far side. Touch down into the Toro zone. Lankala stops it for Earn. Earn has a man on his hip. Link wins that battle. Plays with Foose. Foose moves it along to the far wall. They dig there. It comes back to Foose. He'll leave it. Loven plays along to the near side. Mucha. Miro throws out to neutral ice. Dogs will control there. Stampahar. Stampahar gains the line on the far side. Leaves off for Height. Height shot. It's in. Caleb Height draws the ice dogs even. With a shot from the top of the far circle. Fifteen oh seven to play in period number two. We're all tied up at one. Lance on the draw. Some rather confident Fairbanks fans right next to me. Apparently that was the game-winning goal. Down low they dig. Puck squirts out front. Shackle misses wide. Shot save made. Rebound kicked into the corner. Shackle's on it again. Taken over by Rosenbaum. Rosie looks up ice. Brian Adams couldn't settle it down. It comes back to the near side. Jumped in. Connor McGinnis can't find it. Vanska does. It's poked away from him. Into the skates of Lance. Brian Adams finds it and then flicks to Alex Adams. Al looking up ice. That was played with a high stick. Apparently not. Dumped back down into the Toro zone. Awkward Karam comes back out front. McGinnis finds Alex Adams. Adams dumps it down. Rizak. Up ice. Went, didn't touch it, and it goes for icing. Fourteen oh eight left to go here in period number two. Shots on goal, 10-6 in favor of Fairbanks, but we're even at one aside. This is Talbot. On the draw, wins it back, ends. For Sawchuk, one-timer. That got tipped up and out of play. They're going to put the draw out in neutral ice. This is Talbot on the draw again. 
won it back. Sawchuck dumps it in. Talbot gives chase, pokes at it. Comes out front. Koss couldn't find it. Swept along the wall. Will it get to Sawchuck? No, it won't. Talbot digging for it. Puck squirts out to neutral. Caleb Height watched by ends. Height, good stick by ends as he takes that away. Glass and out for the Toro. Zarizic back on it. Koss up pressuring him. Puck comes to the near side and went. Green steps into Went. Pavel can't find it. Puck to the far side and Hyder. Looking into the middle. Good stick by Sawchuck. Support comes from Hyder. His shot's gobbled up by Lankawa. Well, make that 13-26. Left to go here in the second. Toro's being outshot 11-6, but we're all even at one. Draw to the right of Lankawa. Pavel and Chilton on the draw. This is Pavel and Chilton again. Pav wins the draw back. Earn retreats behind the cage. Lincoln Earn, glass and out for the Toros. Bouncing puck, Stampahar. Chilton plays it back. Stampahar in the slot of his own zone. Throws it ahead. It's off the mark. Foos will have to get back on it. Foos chops it ahead. He missed Lund. Near side. Big collision. Earn got the better of Mobley. Foos digs along the wall. They dig along the near side wall. Toss across. Shot blocked out front by Earn. Vanska on the far wall. Plays it down low for Chilton. Pavel steps in. Thrown out front. Shot save made by Lockler. Rebound given. Thrown back out front and it trickled in. Lankara crashed into. And the Toros trail 2-1. Toros control the draw. Dolomer touches into the zone. Dolomer turns along the wall. Puck rolls deep. Loven with a hit. Far side, Mucha. Schaefer steps into him. Dolomer. Leaves for Mucha. Miro in front for Loven. McGinnis tries to keep it along the wall. They'll dig there. Puck squirts free. Odd man rush the other way. Jax Murray looks across. Broken up. Toros look to get it and go, but it's poked free. Side of the net. Centering feed blocked off. Taken back. Shot that goes wide. Toros control in neutral. Dolomer rolls it in. Benson. This is Arizak. Ahead. Bluger. Bluger flips it deep. Far side. Ahead for Lance. Lance. Rolls it into the zone. Toros look to chase after. Benson flicks to the far side. Alex Adams, shot, blocked off. It ends up in behind. Near side, Sawchuck pinches down. Vanska, and it rolls out to neutral. Alex Adams back on it. Leaves for Sawchuck, looks across for Enns. Enns looks back into the middle. Lance finds it and spins it deep. Benson out of his net to stop. Played off to the far side, Shackle. Shackle carries up ice, looks into the middle for Bluger. Bluger gains the line. Drops for Vanska. Vanska shots up and over. Rebound to the far side. Green wins a battle. It's poked away. It rolls in behind. 
That's played out to neutral. This is Stampahar ahead. Hey, Heider couldn't stop it. Lincoln earns back on it. In behind the net. Jam play doesn't go. Puck rolled around. Green couldn't stop it. This is Went. Leaves at the point for Stampahar. Stampahar plays down into the corner. Earn finds it first. Guides it around to the near side. Stampahar pitches down. Koss height has it. Shot tip. It's in. <laughs> Caleb height. to play here in the second. And the Toros trail by a pair. The Toros have taken their time out. So the Toros now trail by two and are being... Ten oh seven to play here in the second. Here's your third scoring. Scoring goal, his second goal of the game. Caleb Height credited with his second of the game. Need two to come back. They've allowed three here. Ten oh seven left to go here in the second. Toros use their timeout. Pavel and Ruffin. Ruffin wins the drawback. Schaefer plays across. Far side. Bouncing puck. Wilson at his own blue line. Plays back towards the Toro zone. Rosenbaum on his horse after it. Far side. Ruffin poked away from him into the corner. Ruffin flicks it deep in behind the Toro. Net McGinnis finds it there. Ginn holding. Slowly up ice. McGinnis ahead. That was out of the reach of Belisle. Will it go for icing? It won't. Into the corner. Pavel wins a battle there. Throws in front. One shot. Save made by Benson. 9.35 left to go here in period number two. Toro's trail by a pair. Lovin, Mucha, and Dolomer. Lovin wins it sideways. Dolomer's tied up and taken down. Lovin can't control. Mucha does. Miro back on the attack. He's forced to turn. Leaves it along the wall. Dolomer's there as well. They scrum along the boards. Down into the corner. Mucha couldn't get that. Lovin swept up top to the point and ends. His shot goes up and over. Rebound to the near side. Mobley ahead. Colby ends back on it. Ends plays around to the near side. Sawchuck keeps it moving. Muha. Miro couldn't clear the zone. Mobley has it. Stepped into. Miro finds Alex Adams. Al leaves along the near wall. Gets it back. Then tries to go back to Miro. Loven steps in. Loven out of the corner. He's tied up. Arizak can't get it past Miro. It comes right back to him. Arizak looking to skate it out of the zone this time. Dumped in. Lankula puts it over to the far wall. Shackle in the corner. Earn steps into him. Lance finds it. Guides it along the far wall. Aggressive pinch down from the point by Willits. Down into the corner. Shackle plays back to the point. Willits thrown down low. Lincoln, Earn, and Vanska cancel. Shackle finds it. Shackle plays down low. Vanska and Foose. Vanska, Shackle one-timer, kicked away by Lankula. 
on the Toro startup ice. Lincoln Earn across. It's into the zone, but the Toros were mid-change. Quickly up for Vanska. Vanska delays, looks across. Hyder was tied up. That puck pops up high in the air, lands in the slot, bouncing puck. Able to settle it down as Hyder. Hyder into the middle, no one there. Far side, they throw back up top. Schaefer from the point. Hammers one that's gloved and held by Lankala for a whistle. Shots on goal, 14-8 in favor of the Ice Dogs. 7.34 left to go in the second. Talbot and Hyder on the draw. Thrown down the wall, Hyder. Back to the point. Long shot coming, that's blocked off. Talbot leaves across for McGinnis. McGinnis back for Rosenbaum. Rosie carries ahead into the offensive zone. Poke checked, and Went looks to turn with it. Plenty of Toros back. Went lost the handle over to the far wall. McGinnis finds it. Had it taken away, thrown in front. Jax Murray can't pull the trigger. Talbot will just flick that out. 6.55. Left to go in period number two. Near side, touched in, and it goes for icing. Ruffin didn't get a stick on it. 6.47, offensive zone draw coming. Shots on goal, 14-8. to eight. Pavel to take this draw. draw, quick shot by Lund is blocked in behind and then thrown up and out of play. That's treated like an icing, or did they say it got the glass? It did, so the dogs will be allowed to change. They only change one. Mayhew comes on. Wilson goes off. Pavel. Draw controlled by Ruffin. He plays it in behind the net. Around to the near side and steps into Johnston. But the puck's ahead for Ruffin. Ruffin into the middle. The dogs couldn't get it towards the net. Sawchuck finds it. Saw quickly up for Lund. Lund poked at the line. Bouncing puck back out to neutral. And it ends up in the Toro zone. Jax Murray finds it. Murray looking to wrap it around. Shut down nicely by Belial. Follow-up try goes High and wide off traffic. Ends behind the Toro net. Guides it around to the near side. And Belial. Belial gains the red line, rolls it deep. Pavel will steamroll after it. They move it to the far side. Stampahar couldn't stop it. Dolomer does. Dolomer has his stick tied up. He continues to dig along the wall. Pavel steps in as well. Dolomer continues to bull his way, but finally Stampahar steps in and takes it away. Throwing back towards the Toro blue line. Won't go far enough for icing. Foos comes across for Lincoln Earn. Link banks around to the far side and Foos. Foos comes across. Mucha over skates. Looks across for Dolomer. Dolomer puts it into the zone. Loven gives chase. Schaefer's the first to it. Schaefer leaves it there. And it's left to the far side and Height. Height just flicks out. McGinnis. Working in front of the Fairbanks bench. Adams ahead for Mucha. Miro in. Delays. Shot. Save made. Rebound to the end wall. Thrown in front by Miro. No one there for the Toros. Near side. Mobley flicks it cross corner. 4.57 left here in period number two. Up top. They dig at the side of the net. Quickly to Bluger. Shot gobbled up by Lankawa. Shots now 15-8 in favor of the Ice Dogs. The Toros just one shot on goal this period. The Ice Dogs now have seven, three of which have gone in. Draw to the right of Lankawa. Long shot blocked out front. They dig in behind the net. 
Vanska, Shackle, far side. Shackle's there. Falls down. They play it down in the corner. Vanska, watched by Sawchuk. Far side, Vanska. Over to the far. Lance is tied up. He wins the battle. Plays it in behind for Enns. Enns quickly flushed out. Left behind for Sawchuk. Saw. Glass and out. Arizic touches to the far side. Shackle pokes it down in the Toro zone. Lance is back on it. Lance, his pass ahead is taken away by Vanska. Left to the far side in height. Height forced to turn and steps into him. Lance pins a man along the wall. They dig down low. Ends wins the battle. Fights through a hook and then plays ahead. Brian Adams stepped into, but he's able to make that green. Was able to clear the zone. Brian Adams chases after this. Adams leaves for green. Green. Trying to pull the trigger. He gets hooked. Throws in front. That's blocked off the outside of the net. Earn finds it. Shot. He was looking for a tip. Didn't get it. Talbot plays it down low. Green. Taken out before he gets to the puck. Near side. Talbot plays the body. They'll dig. Talbot working along the wall. Costs. Talbot. Earn pinched in. He got hooked down. To the point that the player lost his stick. Meanwhile, on the attack, shot blocked. Foose banks ahead. It never got through to Koss. Hyder finds it. Plays across. That's dangerously close to too many men, but Jax Murray wisely didn't play the puck. Jax Murray delays. Jax Murray shot goes up and out of play for a whistle. They take the draw out of the zone. A palindrome on the clock. 2.52 left to go here in the second. Shots still 15-8. Draw in neutral ice. Pavel line out against the Ruffin line. Pavel wins it back. McGinnis carries ahead. He's bumped along the wall. Forces it ahead to Pavel. Pavel's tied up. Puck squirts free. Lund has it. Lund flicks it into the zone. Toros give chase. Wilson's on it. Pavel steps into him. Lund. Down the wall, Pavel tied up, Belial hog tied. Belial works it free to Pavel. Pav working on the wall, Belial steps in. Belial, poke checked, and it's taken away by Ruffin. He comes across, Johnston can't control. McGinnis banks out to neutral. Schaefer touches towards Ruffin. Ruffin gains the line, what do we got? Offside. Offside on the whistle, 2.07 left to go here in period number two. This is Loven and Chilton on the draw. Into the zone, Mayhew, shot, save made, follow up try, put up and over. In behind, Sawchuk banks it ahead. Brian Adams works it out to neutral ice. It didn't get through for Dolomer. Sawchuk back to ends, back to Sawchuk. Sawchuk eludes the forecheck of Went. He leaves off for ends. Ends starts up ice. Colby ends, dangles through into the zone. Shot save made, no rebound given. 128 left to go here in period number two. Shots now 16-9 in favor of the Dogs. Mooch, Talbot, and Alex Adams out as the Toros juggling lines a little bit. But Bluger won the draw back. Played around to the near side. Vanska. Vanska stepped up on by Lincoln Earn, but the puck's ahead for Shackle. Shackle into the middle. Shot. Longula fought it off. Puck on the far side. Alex Adams can't get it and go. Talbot steps in. Talbs comes across for Earn. Earn ahead. Alex Adams was trying to get behind the defense, but Wilson played it nicely. Schaefer behind his own cage as we approach the final minute of play. McGinnis couldn't step in and take that away. Longula uses the glass to work that ahead to the near side. It's out for Mucha. Mucha ahead for Green. 
Green can't corral. Height dumps it in. Jake Rosenbaum digging along the wall, wins a battle, and starts the Toros out. Rosie. Rosie gains the red and looks to dump it in. It's taken away. Two on one the wrong way. Hyder breaks wide. Shot blocked by McGinnis. Went. Throws down low. Far side. Rosenbaum able to clear barely. Pass comes across. Mucha boots it. It's back up for Went. 13 seconds. Went. Goes down. He'll dig along the wall, and that will end the period. Horn sounds. We're through two. We'll keep it here. As Stephanie Odie will have Toro's head coach, Marty Murray. All right, Marty, Fairbanks has another three-point lead. They go in flashes here. How do you get this one in the third period? Well, we got to get back to moving our feet and win a battle. That's how we did a lot of reaching that period for pucks and, and uh, you know, in turn, uh, didn't slow them down. So we got to find a way to get their body on them, uh, win a little more 50-50 puck battles, and then in turn, hopefully, have some more ozone time. They really use that pressure coming into this one. How do you retaliate and do the same? Well, I think first with us, the strength of our game is working over the goal line so we got to get pucks deep and, and force their D and, and, and get a little bit more puck possession and not be maybe have a little more poise with the puck before you throw it away alright thank you coach thank you once again that's Toro's head coach Marty Murray with Stephanie Odie down on the benches now joining me Toro's assistant GM Chris Lonke Chris a vastly different period Toro's outworked outshot and outscored pretty much all period yeah I mean obviously the first 10 minutes uh, we weren't ready to match their intensity uh, they definitely put a 2-3 pinch in there. Uh, they changed their forecheck a little bit, and uh, we didn't get a couple pucks out, and, or they had good transition there. Yeah, they just outworked us for pucks. It's not it's not rocket science. We're going to have to match that intensity in the third, and, and have te uh, the first 10 minutes we got to do uh, exactly what they did to us right there. You know, looking at, I thought the second goal was kind of a weird one. I, Samu was crashed into at the post. It just kind of trickled in. What did you see there? I mean, the other two shots were clean shots that beat him, but I couldn't really tell what happened yeah. on that play. It almost looked like everybody stopped playing. Like he said, he either thought his net was off or he had it squeezed against the net, which in his opinion was a loss of sight. So whistle. Uh, Wyatt said he was over on the other side. He said, no, nah, it was just it was a weird puck and weird situation. And they kept working hard, and we, we let him get to that puck and put it in. You know, what will the Toros need to do besides hard work? Is there a strategic thing they can do to break this this four check? It seems like the Toros have been pinned in a little bit. Uh, yeah, I'm, I, we got to talk about that. I don't know that they're going to come out with a 2-3 pinch in the third with a two-goal lead, but we definitely have to read that early in the, in the period if they're going to do that and then have an adjustment in place. Uh, these two teams know each other well. It's it's There's no secrets. It's We need to, like Coach said, put pucks deep, outwork them for them, uh, find a way to get pucks to the pads and to the scoring area and, and hammer one home uh, in that first five minutes and get us get us uh, our crowd back into it and get the bench jumping again. All right, I'll let you go. Get ready for period number three. Thanks for coming up. No problem. Thank you. Once again, that's Toro's assistant general manager, Chris Lonke. We'll take a commercial break here on the Gooseneck Implement Intermission Report. When we come back, we'll take a look. At the math here on the Minotauros Network. Hi, Taros fans. I'm Colby Enns. When the Taros get on the bus, the first stop is always at Applebee's. Whether it's Jamestown, Fargo, or Grand Forks, the Taros always get a good meal. The boys like Applebee's so much, we eat at the Minot location, too. Thanks to Applebee's, when we're on the road, the only thing we're hungry for is a win. Applebee's 2 for 20. Now that's eating good in the neighborhood. Whoa, what? 
hell was that? That's the sound of someone getting one of America's fastest refunds from Liberty Tax. Hey, there's mine. Tired of waiting for your tax refund? Let the professionals at Liberty Tax help you discover America's fastest refunds. Find us at LibertyTax.com or call 866-871-1040 today to find a location near you. That's 866-871-1040. Liberty Tax Service, where we put the fun and the speed back into doing your taxes. America's fastest refunds from Liberty Tax. All in one place, you can get a fabulous coffee, the best burger in town, arrange a meeting for up to 30 people, and begin your next trip, whether business or vacation. It's Minot's newest, most architecturally beautiful, versatile structure, the Minot International Airport. The Trestle Tap House and Cafe with Caribou Coffee and customizable meeting spaces are just a couple of the amenities offered. The Minot International Airport. See the world from home. Captain's Cove Seafood Restaurant invites you in for your favorite seafood as well as steak, chicken, and lots of great burgers and sandwiches. The Cove has fish and chips, crab, shrimp, and all-you-can-eat meals. Captain's Cove, where fishing is made easy. 1735 South Broadway in Minot. Throughout the areas we serve, First International Bank and Trust employees are actively involved in helping our customers and communities grow. This is Kevin Vigestead from First International Bank and Trust, member FDIC, equal housing lender. Whether it's coaching a little league team, leading through involvement with nonprofit organizations, or a proud Beaver booster, know that all of us at First International Bank and Trust are committed to giving back to the places where we live and work. I'm here at the year's hottest stag pool party. Put your antlers up! Where? Some poor guy's backyard. These stags are bringing down the house. Seriously, deer are ripping holes in the pool cover. They're trampling patio furniture. And all the damage was covered thanks to Farmers Insurance. Stag Pool Party, October 27th, 2014. Talk to a farmer's agent. We know a thing or two because we've seen a thing or two. We are farmers. Bum, 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 bum. I'm Charles Forward, Taylor Lance. Call Miranda Schuler, my billet mom, and your local's farmer's agent at 701-838-8144. Hey, guys. My name is Steve Olschwanger, fire chief from Maryland Heights, Missouri, and I love firehouse subs. Take their meatball sub, for example. It's loaded wall-to-wall with Italian meatballs in a zesty marinara with melted provolone on a toasted roll. And when I say take their meatball sub, I mean it. Grab a medium meatball sub combo to go right now, just six bucks. But don't forget, the reason Firehouse Subs is driven to make the best subs anywhere is simple. The more subs you enjoy, the more they're able to help save lives because a portion of every purchase goes towards first responders and our communities. The Firehouse Sub Meatball Sub Combo. Medium meatball sub, your choice of chips and a 22-ounce drink. Get it hot and ready in our to-go box. Now just $6 for a limited time only. Order online now at firehousesubs.com. Firehouse Subs, founded by firemen. Firehouse of America will donate 0.13% of your purchases in 2017 at all U.S. locations to the Firehouse Subs Public Safety Foundation with a minimum donation of $1 million. For full details, visit firehousesubs.com. Welcome back inside the Gooseneck and Women Intermission Report at the Fogarty Arena. Second intermission of game three in this best of three Robertson Cup semifinal Toros. Took a 1-0 lead, but now trail 3-1 through 40 minutes. We'll recap the scoring for you. In the first at 12:34, it was Talbot with his first of the playoffs. Connor McGinnis, his fourth helper, set it up with a nice play, cutting through the neutral zone and then onto the attack, finding Talbot on the back door. But a bad five-minute stretch for the Toros in the second period results in three goals against Caleb Height, his fourth of the playoffs from Jake Bordiga at 4.53. Then at 7.25, Luke Mobley from Tanner Shackle, his second of the playoffs, Shackle's third assist, and then Caleb Height unassisted at 9.53, exactly five minutes after the first Fairbanks goal gets his second of the game, and it makes it Three to one through 40 minutes. Of course, no other NAHL scores to look at. We're the only game today. The Shreveport Mudbugs eliminated the Wilkes-Barre Scranton Knights last night with a 2-1 victory here, and they await the winner of this one. While we've got a minute here, want to say Happy Mother's Day. To all the moms listening, including my mom, who's out in Washington, D.C. 
And especially happy Mother's Day to the Bullet Moms back in Minot. Families who open up their homes and host the Toros players as they come from all over the world to live and play hockey in Minot for nine months a year. We wouldn't be able to do what we do without the Billet families graciously opening up their homes. So happy Mother's Day, not just to the moms, but to the Billet moms as well. When trailing after the second, the Toros are 1-3 and three in the postseason. The Ice Dogs, when leading after two, 6 0 oh, and one However, if you include the regular season, no team has been in this situation more and won than the Minot Minotauros. Nine times this year, the Toros have entered the third period trailing and won the game. They will need to do that today to stay alive and face Shreveport in tomorrow's title game. We'll take a commercial break. Come back with the third period after these messages here on the Minotauros Network. Hi, Toros fans. I'm Alex Adams. When the Toros get on the bus, the first stop is always Applebee's. Whether it's Jamestown, Fargo, or Grand Forks, the Toros always get a good meal. The boys like Applebee's so much, we eat at the Minot location, too. Thanks to Applebee's, when we're on the road, the only thing we're hungry for is a win. Applebee's 2 for 20. Now that's eating good in the neighborhood. Take care of your feet and they'll take care of you. The foot and ankle specialists at Trinity Health can help with both surgical and non-surgical solutions. So patients who suffer from foot and ankle related issues can say, so long heel pain, catch you later corns, hasta la vista hammer toes. Relieve pain now and help prevent future discomfort. Diagnosis and treatment is available today. Trinity Health, reinventing health. We live in such a fast-paced world. It's always go, go, go. When I'm out for a run, it's my time. It's the best way to start your day. Crossing the line of that marathon, it's the biggest reward you can get. I want my customers to achieve their goals and go above and beyond. I'm Nikki Ledeggi, and I'm one of the running experts at Shields. Shields, when it comes to gear and expert advice, we're right there with you in Bismarck, Minot, Grand Forks, Fargo, and Moorhead. Hello, I'm Steve Funningsland, consumer lender at First Western Bank and Trust and sports enthusiast. Employees at First Western know the importance of teamwork in their day-to-day banking duties to best serve the community. I know the Minot and surrounding area high school and college athletic teams know the importance of teamwork as well. We want to wish all local teams good luck in their athletic endeavors this year. Stay safe on the courts, on the fields, on the rinks, and in the gyms. We look forward to watching you succeed. With familiar faces you know who know you by name, First Western Bank and Trust, you can bank on us, member FDIC, Equal housing lender. All in one place, you can get a fabulous coffee, the best burger in town, arrange a meeting for up to 30 people, and begin your next trip, whether business or vacation. It's Minot's newest, most architecturally beautiful, versatile structure, the Minot International Airport. The Trestle Tap House and Cafe with Caribou Coffee and customizable meeting spaces are just a couple of the amenities offered. The Minot International Airport. See the world from home. Daniel the deer danced everywhere. He pranced through fields and jigged through rivers. Then he saw it. What a stage. A place no deer had dared dance before. The hood of a brand new car. car. And the car was covered thanks to Farmers Insurance. Deer dance floor, December 1st, 2014. Talk to a farmer's agent. We know a thing or two because we've seen a thing or two. We are farmers. Bum, 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 bum. I'm Charles Forward, Taylor Lance. Call Miranda Schuler, my billet mom, and your local's farmer's agent at 701-838-8144. 
what was that? That's the sound of someone getting one of America's fastest refunds from Liberty Tax. Hey, there's mine. Tired of waiting for your tax refund? Let the professionals at Liberty Tax help you discover America's fastest refunds. Find us at LibertyTax.com or call 866-871-1040 today to find a location near you. That's 866-871-1040. Liberty Tax Service, where we put the fun and the speed back into doing your taxes. America's fastest refunds from Liberty Tax. The sinister cries haunted Mary through the night. Dawn neared and still the voice tormented her. She ran towards the safety of her car, flung open the door, and a coyote had somehow gotten locked inside. But the damaged interior was covered thanks to Farmers Insurance. Coyote Carpool, August 1st, 2015. Talk to a farmer's agent. We know a thing or two because we've seen a thing or two. We are farmers. Bum, 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 bum. I'm Charles Forward, Taylor Lance. Call Miranda Schuler, my billet mom, and your local's farmer's agent at 701-838-8144. Hey, guys. My name is Steve Olschwanger, fire chief from Maryland Heights, Missouri. I love Firehouse Subs because you can feed your whole crew and help your community thanks to Firehouse Subs cater if you're planning a tailgate an office holiday party or anything in between firehouse subs has crowd-pleasing platters starting at just five dollars per person they'll even deliver to you and of course you'll be helping your community because a portion of every purchase at firehouse subs goes towards helping first responders in our communities the more subs folks enjoy the more firehouse subs is able to help save lives Firehouse Subs Catering. Choose from sub, salad, or dessert platters for your next group gathering. Platters start at just $5 a person. Visit FirehouseSubs.com to find a location near you. Firehouse Subs, founded by firemen. Firehouse of America will donate 0.13% of your purchases in 2017 at all U.S. locations to the Firehouse Subs Public Safety Foundation with a minimum donation of $1 million. For full details, visit FirehouseSubs.com. you got gonna love fire from Ryan. Hi, this is Carson Wentz. While we have a couple seconds, I'd like to tell you why I'm a fan of Ryan Family Dealerships. They know the only way to win someone's respect, to earn their business, is by meeting and exceeding their expectations. That's why I buy my vehicles here. Whether it's sales, parts, or service, you can be sure they'll go the extra mile for you. Take it from me, you're going to love buying from Ryan. Your hands are a vital part of who you are, how you work, play, even how you communicate. When injury or illness strikes, the hand team at Trinity Health will be there to help restore full functionality. We specialize in surgical repairs, hand reconstruction, non-surgical interventions, and occupational therapies. Don't let damage or disorder take away your hands. See the hand team at Trinity Health. Trinity Health. Reinventing health. Captain's Cove Seafood Restaurant invites you in for your favorite seafood as well as steak, chicken, and lots of great burgers and sandwiches. The Cove has fish and chips, crab, shrimp, and all-you-can-eat meals. Captain's Cove, where fishing is made easy. 1735 South Broadway in Minot. Throughout the areas we serve, First International Bank and Trust employees are actively involved in helping our customers and communities grow. This is Kevin Vigestead from First International Bank and Trust, member FDIC, Equal Housing Lender. Whether it's coaching a Little League team, leading through involvement with nonprofit organizations, or a proud Beaver Booster, know that all of us at First International Bank and Trust are committed to giving back to the places where we live and work. Welcome back inside the Fogarty Arena here on the Minotauros Network AM 1390. KRRZ and HockeyTV.com Toros taking the ice backs against the wall we've said it all season long that's when this team seems to play their best hockey and they're going to need to do just that outshot 17-9 and trailing 3-1 through 40 minutes the Toros need a win to save their season and advance to tomorrow's title game I said it during the Gooseneck Implement Intermission Report. No team in the North American Hockey League has been better in this situation. Trailing entering the third. The Miracle Minotauros have won nine times this season. They make it ten. And we play tomorrow. Come 
They don't. And tomorrow we head back to the Magic City. Pavel line out to start. Pav wins the draw back. And the third period is underway. Rolled in on the far side. Arm is up. And the Toros have iced the puck just eight seconds in. Draw will be to the left of Lankawa. Pavel and Ruffin on the draw. Sawchuck controls. Near side, it's ahead for Pavel. Pav gains the line. Puts one on net. That's covered Hungry Hungry Hippo style by Benson for the Toro's 10th shot on goal. Offensive zone draw coming. Pavel line stays out in front of Sawchuck and ends. Down into the corner. Played along the wall. Fairbanks finds it. Hader chips out to Went. Went delays. Now he looks for the trailer. Rizik shot blocked out front. Follow up try goes up and out of play for a whistle. They'll move the draw out to neutral. 19-22 left to go in the third. Toros, I believe, would love to get at least one before the 10-minute mark. Talbot and Hyder on the draw. One back by the Dogs all the way into their own zone. In behind their net. Mayhew comes across for Height. Height has two in this one. He plays ahead for Hyder. Hyder works on Foos. Around behind Hyder. Foos muscles him into the wall with a puck. Still on a Fairbank stick. It comes back to Hyder. He'll roll it down low for Height. Talbot pins him. Earn steps in. Earn uses the glass to work that ahead, but not out. Kept at the point. Shot goes wide. Rebound around to the near side. Alex Adams chops at it. Tries to fire one up for Talbot. It gets to the neutral ice before being cut off. Dogs take back over. Bluger guides it back to Schaefer. Far side into the zone. Schaefer shot gobbled up by Lankula for a whistle. 18-36. Left to go here in the third. Draw to the left of Lankula. Lovin and Bluger. Bluger wins it back. Vanska misplays, but Mayhew has it now on the near side. His shot's blocked by McGinnis and then dumped down into the corner. Lovin. Lovin carries out. Fights through. Lovin pulling his way ahead. Puts it into the zone. It's chopped right back out. Rosenbaum has it. Rosie looks across. Drop back for Rosenbaum. Near side, Loven. Loven's pass up ice is picked off. Bluger looks into the middle. Mayhew. Mayhew into the zone. Leaves off far side. Vanska. Vanska can't spin away from McGinnis. Rosenbaum chips to the near corner. Loven finds it. Shovels ahead for Dolomer. Dolomer gives to Brian Adams. Brian Adams. Spins it down into the corner. Dolomer gives chase. Dolomer looks in front. No one there for the Toros. They were mid-change. Enns has it. Rolls it deep. Toros will chase after. Koss trying to free it up. He is working on Stampahar. Stampahar turns away. Throws to the near side in height. Caleb Height. Watched by Enns. It's poked free. Green couldn't get it and go. He's able to clear out to neutral. Dumped right back in. Mobley gloves down to the stick. Tries a shot save made by Lankala. 17-18 left to go here in the third. Shots on goal 19-10. Toros trail by a pair. Draw will be to the left of Lankala. Pavel and... 
Ruffin on the draw. Ruffin won it sideways. Sawchuck keeps it moving behind the net. Ruffin's going to be the first to it. Ruffin guides it back to the point in Schaefer. Schaefer shot blocked by Lund. Caroms to the far point. Wilson shot through traffic goes wide. Schaefer pinches down and keeps it alive. They move it in behind the net. Johnston. Johnston comes back to the near side. Lund steps in and finds this. Keenan Lund plays it ahead out to neutral lights. Can't get it through Schaefer. And it's thrown up into the crowd for a whistle. 16.52 here to go in the third. Draw will be in front of the Toro penalty box. Talbot and Hyder on the draw. Bouncing puck. It hit the linesman leg and then carry him back to the Dice Dogs defenseman. Hader comes to the near side in height. Height shot. Fought off by Lankula. Rebounding behind. Lincoln Earn guides it to Mooch on the far side. Mucha works it to Earn. Earn looks back up ice. Mucha finds Alex Adams. Adams has Talbot driving the net. Passes there. Talbot couldn't settle it down. It hit him in the shin pad. Back in behind for Talbot. Talbot around from behind. Comes out for Adams. Shot blocked. It stung Mayhew. Muha finds it and then lost the handle. The Toros have to chase. Dumped down into the Toro zone. Good play on the rush for the Toros. The pass just not quite what Talbot needed. 16.08 left to go here in the third. Foos. Flipped that one out of play for a whistle. It's treated as an icing. It's not a penalty like it would be in the NHL. Lovin and Bluger on the draw. Toro's control. Dolomer ahead. Chips it off the wall. Brian Adams looks to chase it down. He gathers at the hash marks, looks in the middle, never got through to Lovin. Puck freed up out to neutral. Shackle couldn't control the Toro's will. McGinnis brings it around to the near side. Austin Dolomer. Wilson comes down the wall and keeps it alive. Bluger from the blue line looking out front. He wanted a tip. He didn't get it. Schaefer hammers one. Save made by Lankula. No rebound given. Fifteen thirty-three. Left to go here in period. Number three. Draw to the left of Lankala. Chilton down the wall. Forced in behind. Lance just dumps him down and the Toros take back over. Far side, Koss. Stepped into. McGinnis has it. Ginn. Looking to escape pressure. Chips it ahead. It was behind Koss, who now takes it away. Austin Koss rolls it deep along the wall. Can't get it into the corner, and Went will go the other way. Went, watched by Enns. Enns forces him to turn, and it rolls in behind. Near side, Green. Poked away from Green, and Johnston has it, guides it back. Mayhew looks across to the far side of Rizek. Big hit by Rosenbaum. Puck taken away by the Toros. Ends, comes to the near side, and Pavel. Pav carries up the wall, flicks to the far side, and Sawchuk. Sawchuk gains the line. No, that was whistled offside. A very late whistle on the offside call. Hader, make that Hyder and Pavel on the draw in front of the Fairbanks bench. Sawchuk comes across, ends, banks ahead for Lund. Lund can't corral, now he does, and then his stick lifted, and Height will go the other way. Caleb Height, forced into the corner by Colby Ends. Ends gives him a rough ride along the wall. Lund leaves for, for Ends. Ends comes to Sawchuk. Sawchuk. Plays into the middle for Keenan Lund. Keenan Lund speeding up ice. Gains the line on the far side. Keenan Lund looking to cut in. He's hogtied. And the puck ends up in behind. Pavel falls down. Players all collide. And the puck thrown up into the rafters for a whistle. That come back down? I don't think it did. I think it's stuck up there. 
That puck ended up somewhere up in the rafters and didn't come back down. Talbot and Bluger on the draw. Talbot wins it. Back to the point and earn. Earn. Shot. Tip play. Doesn't go back door. Talbot couldn't tuck it home. Now it's ahead. Shackles in behind the defense. Shackle cuts across. Post. That one caught the post. And Lankala was able to keep it out, barely. Draw to the right of Lankala. Taken over Dolomer. Dolly gains the red line and looks to roll it in. It's cut off, though. And that's whistled offside. It's Brian Adams touched it, apparently. 13.32 left to go in the third. Shots 22 to 12. Bluger and Loven on the draw. Loven pushes it forward. Can't get through. Bluger did well to cut him off. Puck lays free at center. McGinnis frees it up for Loven. Loven looks to turn. He lost the handle. Gets it back. Forced wide, Loven will roll it deep now. Toros give chase, Benson out of his net to stop, mishandles. Toros dig, Dolomir can't get it back to the front as Benson was out of his net. This is Vanska. Vanska in, drops for Shackle, they find the trailer of Rizik, shot blocked, it ends up in the corner. Chilton on it there, looks in front, that hits a stick and caroms up and out of play for a whistle. Toros have gotten their chances. couple of wide open nets that the Toros just couldn't get the last poke at. Draw one back by the Ice Dogs. Shot goes wide in behind the Toro net. Borgia keeps it. Dumps it down low. Mobley. Mobley. Working on Sawchuck, gives to Chilton. Chilton holding, looks to work it to the front. The Toros find it. Ends. Gains the red line and flips one into the corner. Chopped in behind the net. Thrown around to the near side. Ends up the wall, closes it off. He'll dig there and it pops up and out of play for a whistle. Ice Dogs won't be allowed to change. And they're changing anyways. So. And they're going to move the draw out to neutral. Pavel line out. Against Ruffin. This is Foos. Foos dumps it in. Schaefer's back on it. Plays around to the far side. Three on two if the dogs hurry. Ruffin into the zone. Poke free. Belial looks to turn. He's got Lund with him. He leaves off for Lund on the near side. Lund tries a shot. It's put up off the glass. Belial gloves it down. Belial looks in front. Now just missed Lund on the back door. Thrown in front for Belial. He can't find it as well. Schaefer, glass and... Out, it got by Foos, and it goes for icing. Offensive zone draw coming for the Toros. Mooch, Adams, and Talbot. Draw to the left of Benson. Toros absolutely need to take advantage of this icing. Rosenbaum can't handle. Now it's a rush the wrong way. Johnston into the zone. 
Shot save made by Lankalo. Rebound in front. Hacked ahead. Kept at the point by Arizak. Dump down low. Rosenbaum hustles over. They never got to him. Adams couldn't corral either, and Talbot will retreat and retrieve. Talbot carries ahead. 11.25 left in the Toro season unless they can find two. Ahead. Height. Dumps it down low into the Toro zone. Long out of his net to stop it for ends. Near side. Alex Adams turns it over. Went. Walks in. Shot save made. Rebound covered. Hungry, hungry hippo style by Samu Lankala. Dave Lakefield checking in from the lake. 11.03 left to go here in the third. Toro's being doubled up on shots, 24-12, and trail 3-1. Played back, ends, flicks to the far side, and Brian Adams. Adams out for Lovin. Lovin comes in the middle for Nolan Sawchuk. Sawchuk gains the line. It's poked away from him. Shackle looks to turn. Shackle delays. Now he looks for help. Looks across. Shot up and over the net. It was tipped off the glove. So the draw stays in the Toro zone. 10.41 left to go here in period number three. Lovin, Adams, and Dolomer. Foos and Earn. Lovin. Wins it back. It's rung around to the near side. It gets to Dolomer on the near wall. Dolly into the middle. Lovin touches it into the zone. It gets through Stampahar. They look to chase after it in behind. Ryan Adams is there. Gets help from Dolomer. Dolomer. Back to the point in Foos. Foos tries a shot. It goes wide. It's in. They wave it off right away. And right away they say no goal. That is the second goal the Toros have waved off this series. They say it went off the Toros player hand. And the draw comes out to neutral. Draw kicked sideways. In neutral ice. It's a head for Green. Flick to Koss on the far side. Austin Koss tries his shot. It's put up and out of play by Benson. 10-12 left to go. In the third. There wasn't too much argument from the Toros bench on that. Loose puck in the far corner. Lance can't cut it off. Green speeds to the near side. It's out to neutral ice. Foose flips one in. It bounces and Benson makes the stop. 600 seconds left to go in regulation. Toros trail by a pair. It's out to neutralize. Jax Murray touches it into the zone. Johnston can't corral. Green does. Green. Up the far side for Koss. Dogs control. Rolled into the Toro zone. Rosenbaum's back on it. Rosie leaves on the near side for Lund. It kicks free. Pavel. Pavel flicks it into the zone. Arizak and Belial cancel. Mayhew and Lund as well. And it's rung to the near side. Height beats Rosenbaum to it. And they play it out to neutral. Went on the attack. Tries to drive the net. Shut down nicely by the Toros defense. Pavel looked to turn the other way. Pavel. Gains the line. Gets help from Belial. Then they both go sliding down. Lund with it. It's hacked off his stick and flicked out to center. Colby ends on his horse. Vanska races as well. Vanska wins the race but can't get it towards the cage. Of course, 
The Ice Dogs don't need this score. Side of the net poked at by Talbot. 8.40 left to go. Wilson swept across to the far blue line. Shot coming. That's blocked by Belial. Belial scoops it out to neutral. Alex Adams can't find it. And it's dumped down into the Toro zone. This is Enns. Enns looking up ice for Mucha. He was short of center when he tipped it. They won't go for icing. They wave it off. Far side, Talbot stops it. Talbot throws in front. It's blocked off. Orizic stepped into. The Toros take over. Adams banks for Foos. Long pass ahead. You got it again. Delayed call coming, so the Toros to the power play. If there was ever a time for the Toros power play to come through. It's now. Shout out to Pete Spolarich, former member of the Toros official scoring crew. Watching from sunny Hawaii. Loven, Mooch, Adams, Saw, and Ends. The quintet out for the Toros. They need a power play goal now. More than they've ever needed one. Toros control off the draw. This is Ends. Drops for Adams. Adams right back to Ends. Ends looks across for Sawchuk. Does well to keep that in. Mooch looks across. A good stick. Denies. And the Toros have to chase. Saw. Gives to Loven who touches for... Ends as they cut through neutral. Ends gains the red and the blue. Ends looks to carry in. He gets spun down, and it's cleared the length. In behind, Sawchuk starts up ice. Rings it in. Checks up on the far corner. Mayhew tries to spin it. Lovin cuts it off and plays back to the point. Sawchuk, Sawchuk. Leaves off far side, Alex Adams. Adams down the wall. Adams banks it in behind. Loven trying to touch it to the front. Doesn't get through. They chase to the far side. Big collision, Mooch and Adams. Adams has the puck. Plays it down low for Mooch. Miro trying to come out from behind. To play, it's in. Muha. Toros get a power play goal, and they cut it to one. Miro. And that wakes the Toro fans back up. Do the Miracle Minotauros have another one in them? How big is that disallowed goal from earlier? If that one had counted, we'd be all even. Draw one back by the Dogs. Ahead on the attack, Ruffin. Ruffin's shot save made by Lonkula. He's lost his paddle, but he kept the puck out of the net. Follow-up try, that's covered by Samu. 6.38 to go in the third. Draw to the right of Lonkula. Pavel and Ruffin on the draw. 50-50 draw into the corner. Pavel wins the battle, gets help from Lund, chips up the wall. Pucks out to neutral, cost digging there. Pavel as well, Pavel comes out with it. Pavel shovels it deep into the zone. Toros give chase, Benson out of his net, plays around to the near side. Cost down the wall, Pavel, shot, save made, rebound given into the corner. Cost has his stick tied up. Digs against a pair of ice dogs. Lund steps in, but it's up the wall for Jax Murray. Murray gains the red and flips it into the glove of Lonkula, who drops for Lincoln Earn. Earn, long stretch pass is cut off. Hyder's centering feed broken up. Green introduces him to the glass, and the Toros start up ice. It's ahead for Lincoln Earn. Earn lost the handle, then comes in the middle for Green. Green delays, drops for Dolmer. Dolmer delays, looking for a centering play. In front, shot just up and over Brian Adams. 
had room, but Benson got the blocker on it. What a play on the rush. Just enough with the blocker for Benson. Draw will be to Benson's left. Talbot, Mucha, and Adams. In front of Enns and Sawchuk. Talbot wins it back. Enns through traffic. Tip. It's in. Michael Talbot. We're all leaving up. Michael Talbot with his second of the night with 535. It's a whole new game. Listen to this place. The Miracle Minotaurs will not die. They've drawn even with Fairbanks. This team will not go quietly. Here's the call of the goal. Shot gloved and held by Lankala. <laughs> what more could you ask for? <sighs> Draw to the right of Samu Lankala. Quick shot off the draw, save made by Samu. It's underneath, comes free, side of the net. They dig, where is it? Toros find it, it's on the stick of Loven. Loven chops that out to neutral, looks to chase it down. Mayhew finds it first. They joust in front of the benches, it rolls back to the Toro zone. D to D, ends ahead. They poke at it, loose puck found. Caleb Height couldn't reach that one, and it goes for icing. Offensive zone draw, 300 seconds left in regulation of a tie game. Draw to the left of Benson. Pavel line out. Pavel will take the draw against Ruffin. Pav wins it back. Rosenbaum delays. Now we'll just chip it down into the corner. Lund gets spun down by Arizak. They're not going to call anything here the rest of the way, I don't think. McGinnis kept it. Banked down the wall for Koss. Koss has Pavel back door. Shot blocked off. They'll dig behind the net, but it's thrown around to the near side. Height throws out to neutral. Bouncing puck. Johnston settles it down and gains the line on the far side. That one's flipped in behind. Near side, they dig. In behind for Pavel. Pavel sweeps to the far side. Jax Murray steps in and cuts it off before it gets to Koss. Pavel and McGinnis digging for the Toros. The puck squirts free. McGinnis finds it. Again. Buys time in space with his feet and now plays in behind for Rosenbaum. Rosie comes to the near side and Lund. Keenan Lund leaves off far side McGinnis. Again, just hoists one across for Talbot. Talbot railroaded and that's a hand pass. 4.08 to go. Here in regulation of a tie game. Draw will be at center. Talbot and Bluger to face off at center. Talbot wins it cleanly back. Lincoln earned delays. Looks softly up the middle. That missed the intended target. Thrown up ice. Shackle gloves down to the stick. He tries to chop it into the zone, but it hits the linesman. 
Puck deep into the Toro zone now, and Saw Chuck's on it. Saw spins away from Shackle, turned over to Bluger. Bluger looking in front, cut off by Alex Adams. Near side, it's thrown down the wall. Vanska, Talbot steps into him, and they dig. Near side. They dig along the wall. 3.33 left in regulation. We're all even three aside in the third. They dig in the corner. Still can't find it. Saw Chuck does. Saw pulled down again. They're not going to call anything. This is a best of three series game. Three tie game late. They're going to let the players decide. Wilson and Adams rings it around to the near side. Foose keeps it. Foose shot in front. Tip. It's loose. They hack at it. And the whistle goes. 3.05 left to go here in the third. Draw to the right, or no, they'll put it to the left of Benson. Lovin, Green, and Brian Adams in front of Enns and McGinnis. Off the draw, Green tried to jam it on net, but it's going the other way. Mayhew leaves off far side. Feathered in, it goes in behind the net. Collision in the Toros, ends, comes out with the puck. Ends, looks across the far side. Brian Adams tips ahead. Alex Adams gains the line, make that Loven centering feed. That goes wide. Ends, flicks one on that back door. Green fanned on it. He had a wide open side. Height, delays, looks across, tip play. Look, Walker looks got it underneath. End to end we go. Oh, how did that not go? 2.32 left to go in the third. A palindrome on the clock. Toro's getting double up in shots, but we're even at three that have gone in for each club. No matter what happens tonight, Tomorrow's game is going to have, what do we got? Tomorrow's game for the title has got a tall task to live up to this one. 2.31 to play here in the third. Draw, kick to the wall. Pavel finds it, flicks ahead. It'll go for icing. 2.24. Draw to the right of Lankala. One back. Wilson, D to D for the dogs. Schaefer delays. Cost gives him nothing to shoot it. Shot, it's in. Schaefer with 218. Gets one through traffic. And in. Schaefer. Gets one five hole. Makes it four three. Draw back at center. Can the Toros find one more? Thrown up ice height. He'll just flick it in. Lankala guides it around to the near side height. He's tied up. Talbot delays. Looks across for Mucha. Miro pokes it into the zone. Toros give chase. Arizic's on it. Plays up the middle. Kept at the line. Sawchuk flips one. That's gobbled up for a whistle. 153 to play here in the third.
Draw to the right of Benson. Extra attacker on for the Toros. Toros going five forwards and a defenseman. Lovin on the draw. Wins it. Adams looks up top for Sawchuk. Sawchuk through traffic. It's in. Nolan Sawchuk evens it back up. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? What a game. Sawchuk with the Toros net empty and just a minute 48 to play. Draws the Toros even. His fourth of the postseason. <laughs> and we're even at fours. Vanska, far side, falls down. Bluger plays back to his D. Arizic chops it in for Shackle. Shackle, far side, trying to wrap it. He leaves it in behind. Out from behind, Vanska, watched by ends. Back to the point, Arizic, shot goes wide. Rebound to the near side, Lund. Softly out to neutral, Arizic's on it. Arizic plays up Pavel, takes it away. He's lost it, though. Vanska looking to attack. Working on Sawchuk, it's poked free. Good stick by Sawchuk. Shackle plays it down in the corner, however, for Vanska. 1-10 left to go here in the third. Cut off by Lund on, as he came back. Lund using the glass to work it ahead. Pavel chips it out to neutral. 102 left to go here in the thirds. This is dumped in wide of the Toro cage. Ends. Flicks ahead. Lund was tied up. It'll be played by Schaefer, so it won't go for icing. Wilson on the near side. Toros are scurrying mid-change. Touched in by Caleb Height. 43 seconds for McGinnis. It's to Talbot. Gives to Koss. Koss flicks it cross corner. Adams gives chase. Alex Adams, the Toros captain, pokes at it for Mucha. Miro controls. He's on his backhand. Comes across for Rosenbaum. It was read well by Height. He's looking to attack the other way. Toros do well to get back on it. Poke, that goes off the post. A sliding poke from his belly, but they couldn't get it to go. It was Went who shot it. Now he fires another one wide. It's in behind the net. Thrown to the front. Wonka was able to gobble it up. 7.7. Seven seconds left here in period number three. We're even at four aside. Draw to the left of Lankala, 7.7 left. They put that 7 tenths of a second back on. Draw on the Toro zone. Lovin on the draw. It's kicked sideways back to the point of Rizik. Shot blocked by Koss. Koss will eat it along the wall, and we're headed to overtime. We'll take a break. Actually, we'll keep it here and talk to Toro's assistant general manager, Chris Lonke. Well, pretty boring period there, Chris. It's very boring. It's uh, just a whole hum game. The crowd's not into it. No ebbs and flows at all. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I, I've been calling them the Miracle Minotauros since about February when they started this hot run, or March, I guess. But how about the heart? Michael Talbot, we talked about him earlier, scores a huge goal to tie it. <laughs> and then, you know, an icing play, a shot from their captain, Schaefer, goes in, and it looks like the Toros are dead again with just two and a half to play. Pulled goalie, Nolan Sawchuk, another kid who's just been... I mean, if you could pick a guy who you would want every Toro to be like, it's Nolan Sawchuk, yeah, and he comes up huge in the final minutes there. Yeah, I mean, face-offs are huge, and that's what's going to happen in the overtime here. It's the, the little things, all the face-offs, the 50-50 pucks, anything to the net. Um, make the smart play there. We, we survived. A, you know, we want our, 
are good players and make plays, but you just got to know when not to force it there. And we got away with one right there in the last seconds there and, um, to live another day here, get a resurface, get a break, and, and come out and just get to the little things, moving our feet, pucks deep, and get after it. Now, I will ask you about the goal that was disallowed. It comes back. It hopefully doesn't haunt us, haunt us but... What did you see on that play? Right away they waved it off. I didn't see much argument from the Toro bench, but I, I honestly couldn't see how it went in from where I, I was. I happened to be down at the far end as I was moving down to this end, and uh, I, I didn't see much. I did ask a couple of people I know, and they said you know, it looked like he directed it or some form of the glove was involved. So I think it was the right call. Um, again, we just keep dealing with adversity in the right ways, and it almost makes us more motivated. It's awesome to watch. You know, Coming into this overtime now, one mistake can kill you one way or the other. I, what's the message from the coach to to the Toros bench here as, as they get ready for this overtime? Uh, yeah, we're not we're not going to say much. It's just do what we do. You know, it's win faceoffs, use the boards, get the pucks deep, get a hard F one, get support. Um, you know what I mean. Keep your shift short. Anything to the net. You know what I mean. Don't get things blocked. Just just the simple things, the reminders of the simple fundamentals of the game. All right, well, I'll let you go get ready for period number four. Thanks for coming up. No problem. Again, that's Toro's assistant general manager, Chris Lonke. We'll take a commercial break. Come back with more on the Gooseneck Implement and Mission Report after these messages here on the Minotauros Network. Hi, Toro's fans. I'm Colby Enns. When the Toro's get on the bus, the first stop is always at Applebee's. Whether it's Jamestown, Fargo, or Grand Forks, the Toro's always get a good meal. The boys like Applebee's so much, we eat at the Minot location, too. Thanks to Applebee's, when we're on the road, the only thing we're hungry for is a win. Applebee's 2 for 20. Now that's eating good in the neighborhood. Whoa, what was that? That's the sound of someone getting one of America's fastest refunds from Liberty Tax. Hey, there's mine. Tired of waiting for your tax refund? Let the professionals at Liberty Tax help you discover America's fastest refunds. Find us at LibertyTax.com or call 866-871-1040 today to find a location near you. That's 866-871-1040. Liberty Tax Service, where we put the fun and the speed back into doing your taxes. America's fastest refunds from Liberty Tax. All in one place, you can get a fabulous coffee, the best burger in town, arrange a meeting for up to 30 people, and begin your next trip, whether business or vacation. It's Minot's newest, most architecturally beautiful, versatile structure, the Minot International Airport. The Trestle Tap House and Cafe with Caribou Coffee and customizable meeting spaces are just a couple of the amenities offered. The Minot International Airport. See the world from home. Captain's Cove Seafood Restaurant invites you in for your favorite seafood as well as steak, chicken, and lots of great burgers and sandwiches. The Cove has fish and chips, crab, shrimp, and all-you-can-eat meals. Captain's Cove, where fishing is made easy. 1735 South Broadway in Minot. Throughout the areas we serve, First International Bank and Trust employees are actively involved in helping our customers and communities grow. This is Kevin Vigested from First International Bank and Trust, member FDIC, equal housing lender. Whether it's coaching a little league team, leading through involvement with nonprofit organizations, or a proud Beaver booster, know that all of us at First International Bank and Trust are committed to giving back to the places where we live and work. I'm here at the year's hottest stag pool party. Put your antlers up. Where? Some poor guy's backyard. These stags are bringing down the house. Seriously, deer are ripping holes in the pool cover. They're trampling patio furniture. And all the damage was covered thanks to Farmers Insurance. Stag Pool Party, October 27th, 2014. Talk to a farmer's agent. We know a thing or two because we've seen a thing or two. We are farmers. Bum, 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 bum. I'm Charles Forward, Taylor Lance. Call Miranda Schuler, my billet mom, and your local farmer's agent at 701-838-8144. Hey, guys. My name is Steve Olschwanger, fire chief from Maryland Heights, Missouri, and I love firehouse subs. Take their meatball sub, for example. It's loaded wall-to-wall with Italian meatballs in a zesty marinara with melted provolone on a toasted roll. 
And when I say take their meatball sub, I mean it. Grab a medium meatball sub combo to go right now, just six bucks. But don't forget, the reason Firehouse Subs is driven to make the best subs anywhere is simple. The more subs you enjoy, the more they're able to help save lives because a portion of every purchase goes towards first responders in our communities. The Firehouse Sub Meatball Sub Combo. Medium meatball sub, your choice of chips and a 22-ounce drink. Get it hot and ready in our to-go box. Now just $6 for a limited time only. Order online now at firehousesubs.com. Firehouse Subs, founded by firemen. Firehouse of America will donate 0.13% of your purchases in 2017 at all U.S. locations to the Firehouse Subs Public Safety Foundation with a minimum donation of $1 million. For full details, visit firehousesubs.com. Welcome back inside the Fogarty Arena. We're in intermission number three awaiting the start of overtime in this decisive game three. Between the Minot Minotauros and the Fairbanks Ice Dogs, the winner plays for the championship tomorrow. The loser sees their season end and, my, oh my, came back. That's been a crazy game so far. The Miracle Minotauros will not die. Recap the scoring for you. In the first, it was Michael Talbot. From Connor McGinnis. Talbot is first of the playoffs. McGinnis is fourth helper. That would hit it 1 0. Toros at 1234 of the first, and that score held until the second period when a five minute span. Caleb Height got his fourth of the playoffs from Jake Bordiga, followed by Luke Mobley at 725 from Tanner Shackle. Got his second of the season, and then Height, his second of the game, fifth of the playoffs in 953. Made it 3 1 Fairbanks entering the third. As time ticked away on the Toros, it looked as if the Toro season would end. But the Miracle Men from Minot would not die. 13.07, Mucha, his second of the playoffs, unassisted, followed by 14.25, Talbot, his second of the game and second of the playoffs, also listed currently as unassisted. I think these are just needing to be updated because then Nolan Schaefer, that was a shot off a face-off, his third of the playoffs, that was unassisted. That made it 4-3 in favor of Fairbanks after Talbot had tied it just three minutes prior. But with Samu Lankula on the bench, Nolan Sachuk is fourth of the playoffs off of a face-off. Ties the game at 18-12 of the third period at four aside. The Toros... As we have said over and over again, play their best hockey with their backs against the wall. <laughs> you just wish they'd quit putting their backs up against the wall at this point. But the Toros keep coming back. They won't go away. The dogs can't lose them. And now it's heart attack hockey time. The Toros have had a ton of comeback miracle wins this season. I said it before the third. Nine times this year the Toros entered the third period trailing and came back to win the game. That is the most of any team in the North American Hockey League. No team has been better when trailing after two. And the Toros... Did it again, we hope. They've forced overtime. Now, they need one more to get the win. We'll take another commercial break here when we come back. We'll have the start of the first overtime here on AM 1390 KRZ at HockeyTV.com, the Minotauros Network. Hi, Toros fans. I'm Alex Adams. When the Toros get on the bus, the first stop is always Applebee's. Whether it's Jamestown, Fargo, or Grand Forks, the Toros always get a good meal. The boys like Applebee's so much, we eat at the Minot location, too. Thanks to Applebee's, when we're on the road, the only thing we're hungry for is a win. Applebee's 2 for 20. Now that's eating good in the neighborhood. Take care of your feet, and they'll take care of you. The foot and ankle specialists at Trinity Health can help with both surgical and non-surgical solutions. So, patients who suffer from foot and ankle related issues can say, so long heel pain, catch you later corns, hasta la vista hammer toes. 
relieve pain now and help prevent future discomfort. Diagnosis and treatment is available today. Trinity Health, reinventing health. We live in such a fast-paced world. It's always go, go, go. When I'm out for a run, it's my time. It's the best way to start your day. Crossing the line of that marathon, it's the biggest reward you can get. I want my customers to achieve their goals and go above and beyond. I'm Nikki Ledeggi, and I'm one of the running experts at Shields. Shields, when it comes to gear and expert advice, we're right there with you in Bismarck, Minot, Grand Forks, Fargo, and Moorhead. Hello, I'm Steve Funningsland, consumer lender at First Western Bank and Trust and sports enthusiast. Employees at First Western know the importance of teamwork and their day-to-day banking duties to best serve the community. I know the Minot and surrounding area high school and college athletic teams know the importance of teamwork as well. We want to wish all local teams good luck in their athletic endeavors this year. Stay safe on the courts, on the fields, on the rinks, and in the gyms. We look forward to watching you succeed. With familiar faces you know who know you by name, First Western Bank and Trust, you can bank on us, member FDIC, equal housing lender all in one place you can get a fabulous coffee the best burger in town arrange a meeting for up to 30 people and begin your next trip whether business or vacation it's minot's newest most architecturally beautiful versatile structure the minot international airport the trestle tap house and cafe with caribou coffee and customizable meeting spaces are just a couple of the amenities offered the minot international airport see the world from home Hi, Taro fans. I'm Lincoln Earn. When the Taros are on the road, we always stop at Applebee's. They always take care of the Taros, giving us the fuel we need to win away from the Mesa. The boys love to eat there after home games, too. Thanks to Applebee's, when we're on the road, the only thing we're hungry for is a win. Applebee's 2 for 20. Now that's eating good in the neighborhood. Daniel the deer danced everywhere. He pranced through fields and jigged through rivers. Then he saw it. What a stage. A place no deer had dared dance before. The hood of a brand new car. car. And the car was covered thanks to Farmer's Insurance. Deer dance floor, December 1st, 2014. Talk to a farmer's agent. We know a thing or two because we've seen a thing or two. We are farmers. Bum, 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 bum. I'm Charles Forward, Taylor Lance. Call Miranda Schuler, my billet mom, and your local farmer's agent at 701-838-8144. Oh, what was that? That's the sound of someone getting one of America's fastest refunds from Liberty Tax. Hey, there's mine. Tired of waiting for your tax refund? Let the professionals at Liberty Tax help you discover America's fastest refunds. Find us at LibertyTax.com or call 866-871-1040 today to find a location near you. That's 866-871-1040. Liberty Tax Service, where we put the fun and the speed back into doing your taxes. America's fastest refunds from Liberty Tax. Hi, Taurus fans. I'm Austin Koss. When the Toros get on the bus, the first stop is always at Applebee's. Whether it's Jamestown, Fargo, or Grand Forks, the Toros always get a good meal. The boys like Applebee's so much, we eat at the Minot location, too. Thanks to Applebee's. When we're on the road, the only thing we're hungry for is a win. Applebee's 2 for 20. Now that's eating good in the neighborhood. The sinister cries haunted Mary through the night. Dawn neared and still the voice tormented her. She ran towards the safety of her car, flung open the door, and a coyote had somehow gotten locked inside. But the damaged interior was covered thanks to Farmer's Insurance. Coyote Carpool, August 1st, 2015. Talk to a farmer's agent. We know a thing or two because we've seen a thing or two. We are farmers. Bum, 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 bum. I'm Charles Forward, Taylor Lance. Call Miranda Schuler, my billet mom, and your local farmer's agent at 701-838-8144. Hey guys, my name is Steve Olschwanger, Fire Chief from Maryland Heights, Missouri. I love Firehouse Subs because you can feed your whole crew and help your community thanks to Firehouse Subs Cater. If you're planning a tailgate, an office holiday party, or anything in between, Firehouse Subs has crowd-pleasing platters starting at just $5 per person. They'll even deliver to you. And of course, you'll be helping your community because a portion of every purchase at Firehouse Subs goes towards helping first responders in our communities. The more subs folks enjoy, the more Firehouse Subs is able to help save lives. 
Firehouse Subs Cater. Choose from sub, salad, or dessert platters for your next group gathering. Platters start at just $5 a person. Visit FirehouseSubs.com to find a location near you. Firehouse Subs, founded by firemen. Firehouse of America will donate 0.13% of your purchases in 2017 at all U.S. locations to the Firehouse Subs Public Safety Foundation with a minimum donation of $1 million. For full details, visit FirehouseSubs.com. Welcome back inside a raucous Fogarty Arena. Game three, Toros and Ice Dogs. Overtime. Winner to the ship, loser goes home. We're even four aside, 20 fresh minutes on the clock, five on five, regulation time rules apply. Except for, I imagine, barring something very egregious, the referees are going to swallow their whistles. Draw at center, Toro is now working right to left on your radio dial, and they control the draw. Near side, it's taken away by Johnston and the Ice Dogs. Rolled into the Toro's end. Ends, moves it far side. Keenan Lund. Lund flips ahead. Catches a stanch and stays in the zone. Long shot. Save made by Longwell. Rebound just trickled wide to the post. Near side. Pavel pins a man. Johnston has it. Johnston. And ends. Joust in the corner. Johnston lost an edge, but played it back to the point. It missed Schaefer, and the Toros get some relief. Long change here in period number four. Holding behind his own net is Wilson. Up ice, went, touched into the zone to negate the icing. Caleb Height on it first. He has two tonight. Played over to the far side. Foose wraps him up. Talbot plays up the wall. Foose pins a man there. Puck squirts free. Talbot works it, but it's taken away by Hyder. Hyder forced to turn as Lincoln Earn gave him nothing to shoot at. Long shot blocked up and out of play for a whistle. Draw will stay in the Toro zone. Shoot us a message. Let us know how you're feeling. Tweet at the team at Minotauro Hockey, M-I-N-O-T-A-U-R-O-H-O-C-K-E-Y. Or tweet at me personally at Ken underscore Oda, K-E-N underscore O-D-A here on the Minotauros Network. Two hours and 37 minutes into this one. 18.58 left in the first overtime. Muha chips ahead, not out. Now he does get it out. It's ahead for Talbot. Talbot can't settle it down. It gets past Muha and Vanska finds it. That looked offside, but they're in the zone anyways. Played in behind the net. Shackle and Rosenbaum joust. It pops up high in the air. Talbot bats that to the far side. Played with a high stick, and the whistle goes. Eighteen thirty-nine left to go here in period number three. This a dream scenario for the Shreveport Mudbugs, who have today off after eliminating the Wilkes-Barre Scranton Knights in two. Now they get the winner of this game, who not only had to play an extra game, but now is playing overtime. Ryan Adams on the near side, guides it back to McGinnis. McGinnis looks across for Rosenbaum. Rosie, up ice. He was short of center when he chipped it in, but it hit a... They caught someone on the bench, so we'll have a whistle. 18-23 left to go here in the third. Shots on goal, 32-18 in favor of the Ice Dogs, but we're even at four aside. Loven and Chilton on the draw. Sideways it goes. Toro's control ends. Backpedals in his own zone, leaves off Sawchuck. Saw rips to the far side, Dolomer. Dolly comes across for Saw. Saw into the middle for Ends. Ends speeds ahead, gains the red line, and rolls it into the zone. Toros will chase after it. It comes to the side of the net. Dolomer has it in his skates. Dug out by Brian Adams. He's walled off. Dolomer there in support, finds it. Dolly looks across. He had Ends pinching down. Karam thrown on net. Save made by Benson. Rebounding behind. Brian Adams taken down. He's laying on top of the puck. Dogs find it and look to flick to the near side. Schaefer looks up the middle instead. Chilton delays. Banks ahead to the near side. Went. Lost to height. Shot. That goes wide. Rebound to the far side. Loven finds it and flicks ahead. Dangerously close to too many for the Ice Dogs. But Ruffin carries ahead. Gains the line. Tries a shot. Gloved and held by Wonkula for a whistle. 17-27. Left to go here in overtime.
Draw to the left of Samu. Toro fans chanting his name with each and every save. Ruffin and Pavel on the draw. It's one towards the net and Samu covers. Traffic comes, it's still loose. Poked at, follow up try, Samu gets across. Puck hacked to the glass. And all the way down into the Fairbanks zone. Won't go far enough for icing. Arizic has to play. Up ice, that hits a leg. Lund passes ahead for Pavel. It's cut off. Lund frees it up. Looks to gain the line. Keenan Lund in. Leaves off far side. Belial tries to come back. It's blocked off. Lincoln Earns swoops it back. And plays into the near corner. Johnston pinching down the wall. Quick shot. That's blocked away by Lonkerloff. Rebound to the far side. Arizic keeps it. Foos finds it and throws ahead into the kicked into the Fairbanks bench for a whistle by the Fairbanks player Hyder. Draw in front of the Fairbanks bench. Talbot and Hyder. Swept to the near side. Schaefer hammers one in. It goes wide of Lankala's cage. Far side, poke towards the net, it goes wide. Muha hacks ahead, not out, went to turn around, try, gloved and held by Longfellow, 16 and a half to play here in the extra session. Clock is irrelevant. Next goal wins, and we'll play until someone scores it. Talbot and Height make that Talbot and went on the draw. Talbot wins it into the corner. Rosenbaum trying to keep it away from Wendt. He does. Rosie looks to the far side. Alex Adams chips ahead. Bouncing puck. Not out. Lays loose in the circle. Rosenbaum ahead for Mucha. Miro flips it into the zone. It comes to the front. Stuck back in the corner by Benson. Talbot ties a man up there. Puck kicks along the wall. And it's ahead. Far side height. Working on Rosie. Drops one back for Schaefer. Good stick by Alex Adams. Denies the shot opportunity. Caleb Height looks in front. That missed everyone, including Vanska at the point. And the Toros going to change it up. Pass ahead. Vanska trying to catch the Toros in that change. Forced to turn as Sawchuk did well to get on. In the corner. Thrown in front. No one there but Austin Dolomer. And the Toros will look to turn and burn on the offensive. Dolomer dumps it in. It'll ring around to the near side. Defenseman Colby ends down the wall. Played back to Lovin. Lovin looking for a shot. It hits traffic in front. Dolomer pokes at it. Can't get it to go. And now the dogs will look to counter. Vanska. Vanska will work on ends. He chips it into the zone. Shackle's the first to it in the near corner. Shackle looks to leave it for Vanska. And Sawchuk wins that battle. Plays ahead for Brian Adams. Brian Adams flips along the glass. It'll roll towards the Fairbank zone. Won't go far enough for icing. Mayhew has to play. Dolomer forces him to turn back. And the Toros can complete their change. Pass up the middle. Touched for Vanska into the zone. Vanska watched by Sawchuk. Shot gloved and held by Samu. 904 seconds left to go here in overtime. Number one, Toros and Dogs are di- tied at four. The Toros led this game 1-0 after one, trailed 3-1 after two, and then finished it four aside. Pavel and Chilton on the draw to the left of Lankawa. Bouncing puck. Foos can't find it. Mobley does. Mobley trying to drive the net and stuff it. It ends up in behind. Pavel has it. Pokes it ahead for Keenan Lund. Lund flicks up ice. Belial couldn't settle it down. And it's back out to neutral. Pavel cuts it off. Lund finishes the play. Lund gains the line and chips it deep into the Fairbanks zone. Belial should be the first to this. He is. He's tied up. Lund is there. He's tied up as well. Lund trying to walk out of the corner with it. Cannot. Pavel finds it. Plays back to the point. But he missed McGinnis, who then just dumps it in. Toros need to touch up. Pass ahead, Stampahar. Stampahar can't clear, and it's ahead out of the reach of Pavel. Adams finds it. Alex Adams in behind the defense. Backhand try. Save loose from the side of the net. Muha flips it. It doesn't go. Sawchuk pinching down, keeps it alive. Saw looks for Alex Adams in the corner. He missed him. Al throws in front. Save made. Rebound given. Thrown back to the near wall. Mooch finds it. Mooch has... Talbot going to the front, can't get it there. Miro carries around behind, up top for Sawchuk. 
Sawchuk rips, the shot is blocked, it's a race the other way. Johnston in, sliding break up by Lincoln Earn. Lincoln Earn with a huge defensive play on the rush. D to D for Schaefer, near point, blast, blocked out front, it hit Talbot. Muha finds this and works it ahead. The Toros captain Alex Adams clears the zone. Talbot steps up and starts up ice. Talbs gains the line, delays, shot, save made, rebound given to the near side. Dogs trying to catch the Toros in a change, play ahead, it's touched into the zone by Went, but Colby Enns is back on it. Enns spins away from pressure, banked ahead. Loven couldn't gather it at the red line, it's touched for Went at the Toros blue. He leaves off for Hyder. Hyder trying to bull his way to the front, gets hogtied. A no call coming. Fairbanks fans probably rightly so wanted one. Hyder guides back to the point. Shot from Mayhew, skips wide. He was trying to bank it to the front, I believe. Went. Looks to work a cycle and steps in. He's tied up with Mayhew. They dig along the wall. Buck squirts free. Rosenbaum in behind. Put it back into the scrum. Dolomer tries to carry ahead. It's poked away from him. Vanska on the pressure. Toro's able to clear the zone at least. Played ahead, Dolomer. Dolomer finds space on the far side. Throws one wide to the cage. Brian Adams looks to hunt it down, but it's to the near side, and Vanska starts the other way. Plenty of Toro's back. Vanska lost it at the red line. Pavel finds it. Andre Pavel in behind the defense. Pav, shot it in! Toro's win! Toro's are going to the Robertson Cup final! win, Andre Pavel on the breakaway ends it, and we're going to the Robertson Cup final. We will take a break and come back with the Farmers Union Insurance postgame show after these messages here on the Minotauros Network. Hi Taros fans, I'm Colby Enns. When the Taros get on the bus, the first stop is always at Applebee's. Whether it's Jamestown, Fargo, or Grand Forks, the Taros always get a good meal. The boys like Applebee's so much we eat at the Minot location too. Thanks to Applebee's, when we're on the road, the only thing we're hungry for is a win. Applebee's 2 for 20. Now that's eating good in the neighborhood. Whoa, what was that? That's the sound of someone getting one of America's fastest refunds from Liberty Tax. Hey, there's mine. Tired of waiting for your tax refund? Let the professionals at Liberty Tax help you discover America's fastest refunds. Find us at LibertyTax.com or call 866-871-1040 today to find a location near you. That's 866-871-1040. Liberty Tax Service, where we put the fun and the speed back into doing your taxes. America's fastest refunds from Liberty Tax. All in one place, you can get a fabulous coffee, the best burger in town, arrange a meeting for up to 30 people, and begin your next trip, whether business or vacation. It's Minot's newest, most architecturally beautiful, versatile structure, the Minot International Airport. The Trestle Tap House and Cafe with Caribou Coffee and customizable meeting spaces are just a couple of the amenities offered. The Minot International Airport. See the world from home. Captain's Cove Seafood Restaurant invites you in for your favorite seafood as well as steak, chicken, and lots of great burgers and sandwiches. The Cove has fish and chips, crab, shrimp, and all-you-can-eat meals. Captain's Cove, where fishing is made easy. 1735 South Broadway in Minot. Throughout the areas we serve, First International Bank and Trust employees are actively involved in helping our customers and communities grow. This is Kevin Vigestead from First International Bank and Trust, member FDIC, equal housing lender. Whether it's coaching a Little League team, leading through involvement with nonprofit organizations, or a proud Beaver booster, know that all of us at First International Bank and Trust are committed to giving back to the places where we live and work. Welcome back inside the Fogarty Arena in Blaine, Minnesota. The Toros are headed to the Robertson Cup championship game tomorrow night at 7 o'clock after a pretty boring win here in game three of the Robertson Cup 
semifinal. We'll recap it all for you before we go. Andre Pavel with the game winner. Toros thanking the fans who made the trip. A stunning win. That is wrong in the box score right now. We'll recap the scoring for you. Michael Talbot opened the scoring as first of the playoffs. Connor McGinnis at 12.34 of the first made it 1-0 in favor of the Toros. Then Fairbanks struck back in the second. Caleb Hyde at 4.53 from Jake Borgita at he got his first help of the playoffs. That made it 1-1. Luke Mobley from Tanner Shackle at 7.25 made it 2-1 in favor of Fairbanks, followed by Caleb Hyde, his second game in 9.53. That made it 3-1 after 40 minutes. Miroslav Mucha at 13.07 made it a one-goal game. And then Talbot got his second of the night at 14.25 to draw the Toros even. It felt like the Toros had all the momentum, but then after an icing play, Nolan Schaefer, Got his third of the playoffs at 17.42 to make it 4-3 Fairbanks, and it looked like the Ice Dogs were going to eliminate the Toros. But just 30 seconds later, Nolan saw Chuck from Alex Adams and saw his fourth of the playoffs. That made it 4-4 and sent us to overtime where Andre Pavel finds the game winner. For the tenth time this season, the Toros were trailing entering the third period and still won the game. No team has been better when trailing entering the third than the Toros, and they pulled off another miracle. We'll see if they have another one in them tomorrow, 7 o'clock, for the Robbie Cup pregame show. The Farmers Union pregame show will start at 6.45 as your Toros will play for the first Robbie Cup in franchise history. We're not done yet. We'll talk to you tomorrow from the Fogarty as the Toros play for the Cup. For everyone here at the Minotauros Network, I'm Ken Oda, hoping you enjoy the broadcast. We know you enjoyed the outcome. Talk to you tomorrow night. This has been a presentation of Minotauros Hockey. Visit MinotaurosHockey.com to stay up to date on all things Toros. This broadcast was brought to you by Farmers Union Insurance, Gooseneck Implement, Mattress Firm, Liberty Tax, and Coulter Energy. Minotauros Hockey, join the charge.